What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Smoke and Tire Podcast here from the lockdown. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Butcher Box. I mean, look, is there a better time to be talking about mail order meat? Meat that comes to your door, frozen and ready to go, either in your freezer or thawed out and ready to go on your grill. Not everyone has convenient access to high quality meat. But Butcher Box does. You got grass fed beef, free range organic chicken, heritage breed pork, or wild caught salmon. Man, you got all of it. And it comes to your door. Here, I've gotten some Butcher Box over the last month. Here are the things I've done I got the sirloin steak, which I put on the plancha grill I've got, and I made Benihana, straight up Benihana hibachi. It was delicious. I then took the chicken breasts, I pounded them down, and I did a chicken piccata with the lemon and the capers and the white wine, that was delicious. I didn't do all these on the same night, by the way. I then took the ground beef, and I turned it into my famous Tuscan ragu, and you can see that on my Instagram. There's pictures and the recipe for that. But it's a no-brainer, folks. It's the best meat. It's shipped right to my door. Less trip to the grocers. You really don't want to be going there if you don't have to right now. It's a, options like 100% grass-fed and finished beef, free-range organic chicken, Heritage pork, wild-caught Alaskan salmon, and sugar and nitrate-free bacon. It's the way meat should be. ButcherBox is the most affordable and convenient way to get healthy, humanely raised meat. And with ButcherBox, you get the highest quality meat around for just $6 a meal. It is great. Right now, ButcherBox is offering new members ground beef for life, folks. That's two pounds of ground beef in every box for the life of your subscription, plus 20 bucks off the first box. Go to butcherbox.com slash tire, T I R E. That's butcherbox.com slash tire, or enter promo code tire at checkout. Butcherbox.com slash tire, or enter pro- promo code tire at checkout. 20 bucks off your first box and ground beef for life. There is no better time to get mail order meats than right now. Or we're also brought to you by Omaze. They jumped over from the video to the podcast side, and here is why, folks. I worked with Omaze to hook up a really cool prize that you can win. Here's how this works. Omaze is offering you the chance to win an epic road trip on Adventure Drives 2020 in July through the Pacific Northwest in a 2020 Corvette C8. Taxes, shipping, any are included. That's all included. You don't pay anything. Even better, every do, uh, donation, it benefits a great cause. You go to omaze.com slash the smoking tire. And that's O M A Z E. Omaze, like amaze, but omaze. And you enter for your chance to win. So here's what it is Adventure Drives is Rob Ferretti's uh, road rally. Okay. What I love about Adventure Drives no stickers on the car, five star hotels, great dining. And it's not it's not a race or a, even a wannabe race or anything like that. It's a beautiful thing. It's the kind of thing you want to bring your wife or your girlfriend or, or do with a friend. It's, it's, it's more about what happens in your own car. And so you and a friend can go on this trip. And here's the thing. I'm going on this trip that you can win. I'm going to be there. Like, so you're not going to go on a road trip in my car. I'm going to be in a Lamborghini, but you're going to go with your homie or your wife or your husband in a 2020 Corvette C8. It's going to be going from Seattle up into Canada to Vancouver through Whistler through Banff uh, National Park in Canada, which is one of the most beautiful places in the world to drive a car down back into America into a uh, Glacier National Park and ending in Jackson Hole. I mean, this is going to be the sick sickest way to experience the C8, the sickest way to have a road trip with some really good folks, and me. I'm going with my wife. You're going to get to meet, hang out with me and Hannah on this one. So for your chance to go win an epic road trip with me through the Pacific Northwest and Adventure Drives in a 2020 Corvette C8, go to omaze.com slash the smoking tire and enter now. And the best part is every donation supports Team Rubicon. Look them up. It's a great Great cause. I love Team Rubicon. I think it's a great charity. And so omaze.com slash the smoking tire, and you could win a road trip with me. Last but not least, if you're in LA and you've got a car and nowhere to 
keep it. Hit me up. Westside Collector Car Storage is here for you. It's my place, folks. If you think I'm a qualified enthusiast to take care of my own cars, I'm a qualified enthusiast to take care of your cars. And I have built the sickest facility. Go to westsidecollectorcarstorage.com. Westside Collector Car Storage, or just Google us, and we are here for you. Alrighty then, on uh, on this episode and pair of episodes, it's the crew. It's me and Zach in studio talking about life, talking about cars, answering your questions. We managed to make the whole show not about the coronavirus. Trust me, we did. I promise. It's the crew shows from the lockdown on the Smoking Tire Podcast. What up, lads? Fuckers. Happy Friday, everybody. It's uh, the Quarantine Smoking Tire Podcast. We're not quarantined. We, uh, our governor has instructed us not to use that word because we're not quarantined. Of course we're not quarantined. We're not at my house. We're at the studio. Um, mm-hmm. This is I, necessary business. Zach and I, are, uh, we're doing a, a lot of crew shows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not a lot of guests uh, coming in the next few weeks, but I, all right. We're going to try to not talk about coronavirus as much as possible because I know it's depressing. We're not going to make a fucking no coronavirus rule because the fact is it's impacted us, our lives, our industry, and our city in very significant ways. And so there's just no fucking way that it can be avoided entirely. But I wrote down like a bunch of things that are worth talking about. Because honestly, not a whole lot has happened since we've done a show. And the coolest thing I did do, I can't talk about, actually. I, yeah, I Because know. it's embargoed. So I can say why I can't. Like, So I drove the new 911 Turbo S, the 2021 911 Turbo S. But I cannot talk about it until April 6th because the reason I drove it is because the press launch was canceled because of coronavirus. Uh, it's one of four press launches that I was supposed to go to over the next month that are canceled. And so Porsche, um, which I think we talked about this on the last show, did we, or was that just it? Was that just off? Off? I don't. I remember. think I don't remember if it was on the mic or off the mic. But Zach, Zach, so Porsche just brought the car to me for like six hours to go drive and make a video with, uh, and and I and they sent me the press kit and everything, which was like, I mean, it was very nice, you know. And I think I don't think it was because of I was Matt from the smoking tire. I think it was because I was Matt from Road and Track, but it's okay. I won't look a gift horse in the mouth. Um, so I can't tell you really anything about how it drives or anything or show you any of the pictures I took of it, which were lovely. Zach, remember that camera that my mom got me for my birthday? Yes. My mom got me this point and shoot. It's a little Canon point and shoot. I don't remember the model, but it's got the f- craziest zoom. <laughs> oh yeah, from the trip. The, if, we, if we brought it to Tahiti, it was it <laughs> Gale. the 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 length that this thing grew. The lens extended out of it. I mean, the camera is like it's as a, thick as a wallet. Yeah, right? it's like the size of a pack of cigarettes, like a point and shoot. But then the lens comes well, out. It's like a Red Bull can, <laughs> dude. It is. We zoomed in. We could see a, a guy on the beach, yeah. and he was like a mile away. And we could see his head. The zoom was super sick. And you know what's great about a good le- a zoom? It's got like a zoom, a long, um, you know, uh, optical zoom, which is the, the 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 Pinocchio nose lens, and then it has a digital zoom that goes beyond it, so you can you know punch in on that. Um, but for shooting, uh, I brought it out with me to shoot the car. And fucking, it looks great. This really? Little, yeah, just this little point and shoot. I was like, oh, because I also brought my film camera. But um, the little point and shoot, uh, wait, you, those are the pictures that are in the folder I sent you. Okay. Uh, they look amazing. You can't show yeah, them. Yeah, we can't look at no, them. No, you can't look at them. They're embargoed too. But, but um, the, the quality of them for this little point and shoot is unbelievable. Wow. Uh, I'll get the model number of that camera for the I next remember show. it had all Rocket. the settings of like. Highlight, low light. You could you, figure, you could basically just tell it kind of like here's what I want it to look like. Yeah, and it would just adjust it automatically. But what's great about a little point and shoot like that, if you've got the optical zoom, is you can step back because what you don't want is to stand cl- when you're shooting a car. The closer you are to the car, the wider angle you need, and the more the car is distorted. So it's like shooting a person, really. When you shoot a person, you want to step back and shoot them on a longer lens, and that way their features become more accurate, right? Same thing as a car. So a car, you want to shoot like that Canon 70 to 200. Mm -hmm. That's the perfect lens for shooting a car. And you shoot it from 50 feet away, not 10 feet away. Whereas a phone, 10 feet away, wide angle, but the features are distorted. So anyway, this camera can do that. So you step back, you punch in, and it's just, it's a beautiful image. Wow. Which camera was it? Do you remember? 
fucking it's it's new it's in canon's like point and shoot angle i i don't know it's not not the waterproof one but um anyway happy friday everybody on the smoking tire podcast and uh zach and i drink we made we made punch we did <laughs> we made jungle juice because we like <laughs> we're like fuck it's friday we ain't got no job <laughs> ain't got nothing to do might as well we're uh, trying to be a little spring break that's what we're as, doing yeah we're, you know fuck the kids the people just having spring break i mean it's you know, we're, we're literally, except for coming here together, basically staying in our houses. Mm-hmm. And there's people like on Clearwater, like, oots, 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 oots. Dude, and I remember fucking, being 20. I know. Like, and like you what were are, so but why, stupid. But why are we doing <laughs> Why are we doing this when that's going we're, on? We're connecting a little bit. We know we're uh, living vicariously through alcohol. That's what we're doing. Oh, man, I miss Making jungle, jungle juice, juice, dude. I do miss jungle juice. I was in a fraternity, which I'm not entirely proud of. Me too. Although I personally did not do anything horrible to women or <laughs> as far as i know or or you know uh, i'm more embarrassed about the group thi- group group think arguments where people just yell at other groups of people <laughs> so, yeah. uh, my, my sports team house is better than your sports team house like, yeah everyone calm down we uh, i'm emba- <laughs> well i'm embarrassed <laughs> of a few things but most of them i don't want to admit to on the fucking podcast mm-hmm. oh actually that's not true uh, I could probably admit you, to one. You don't at have least. to. Well, don't Something know. I'm embarrassed about in college. I mean, I mean I've things. said most of the things I've that are really bad that I was like a drug dealer and stuff. That's pretty much the one thing that's like, uh, but like it is what it is, uh, or it was what it was. It is no longer certainly, uh, and I don't recommend doing those things. It's not. It's not good for you unless, <laughs> unless honestly, unless you want to learn the metric system really good. <laughs> or major in engineering at yeah. college. I also majored in engineering and transferred that. to art. But while I was doing that, I got very good at math and the metric system. Um, I don't recommend selling weed unless you're in a specific place like the University of Pennsylvania that has its own private police force. You'll never get in trouble with the real cops. It's. I just got here. What are you talking about? <laughs> There's a, a book I read by this dude, Chris Hayes, the MSNBC Chris Hayes, not our Chris mm-hmm. Hayes, mm-hmm. Um, called A Colony in a Nation. And what I just described to you, the private police force at Penn, that was a real thing that we observed at the time and is still going on. Penn had the second largest private police force, only second only to Disney World. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so when you got busted for doing anything as a student it wasn't the real cops it wasn't the philly cops that busted you it was the pen cops so any disciplinary action was within the school why did that school have such a big police force for, well you know? it, it was it's a it's a fancy schmancy ivy league school in the middle of a quote bad neighborhood west philly uh, which has Got become it. gentrified um but so the, they had this private police force primarily to supplement the city but really to kind of make sure that the good kids who went to school their reputations didn't get ruined you know what i mean so you know if the local like black dude on the street was selling dime bags he'd go to like prison and if they went into a kid's dorm room and they found three pounds of ganja and a scale and 10 kids getting high they'd all get like on campus community service it would never really go, yeah yeah it would never go on anybody's record wow. that was the thing once in freshman year once everybody got caught in their dorm room smoking weed and nobody got in trouble like the cops were the real cops never came it was we were like wow well if they're just not going to call the cops like why would we not run a massive drug ring here and we did and nobody ever got in trouble except for the one guy who stayed Everyone graduated, everyone went home, everyone went about their non-drug dealer lives and went on to do the thing that Penn wanted us to do when they had those fake cops arrest us instead of the real cops. Well, everyone else went on to have good lives. The guy who stayed and got busted like 10 years after graduation, got, he, got, he got 10 years in prison. He was still like selling quantity to like kids, like at 30. <laughs> I mean, wow! I don't encourage that at all. Like that's that's a really horrible idea. I mean, but, I don't like to change jobs very often, but he was just like, no, you know, this has one. worked out yeah. for a while. And it was, there was a sting. It was a whole thing. Zimmerman sent me the um, the newspaper clipping. It was fucking wild. He was just working towards his pension, right? Mm-hmm. But no, but Chris Hayes in his book A Colony in a Nation, which is about classism, wrote about the exact same thing that happened at Duke University, where they had a very large private police force and kids who went to the school were never 
properly disciplined by real cops. So nothing ever went on their record, no matter what they did. And then they come down with affluenza later because they're like, I don't mm-hmm. understand what rules are. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know how I don't know why he used that as an example of classism. It doesn't seem like anything. It doesn't, <laughs> Jesus Christ doesn't at all. But I mean, bootstraps. Oh yeah, the, yeah. No, it's all fucking horseshit. At the t- at the time, me and my friends were like, "Well, how do we? We can take advantage of this system." Absolutely. It didn't. We didn't think at the time what it meant. You know what I mean? Like. Why did that system exist? Who is it set up? Because it's an intentional system. That's well, not when you're accident. like 18, 19, 20, you think about five inches in front of your face. <laughs> really? Like, that's all you see. You're just like, what? Yeah. what is happening right now? I This, that, or the other thing, and I'll just go that direction. Right. You know, it's like choose your own adventure, yeah. but with no foresight or long distance thinking <clears throat> at all. Oh, and when I, I thought it was unique to Penn, and then when I heard Chris Hayes uh discuss it in the book i went oh fuck that's what that whole system was about oh my god same thing i don't know how we got there but uh that's all i really I don't have to say about know that either uh um, anyway i wrote down some things to talk about um where should we start uh, i thought it would be funny because um these press launches have been canceled and and all that but but I don't, and I don't know what'll happen because uh, the governor and the mayor here, Garcetti, just basically said all non-essential business needs to shut down. Okay, um, what they've been doing with press cars the last like week and a half is like showing up to my house in like gloves and masks. They pull the car up outside my garage, call me. I open the garage remotely because I have a thing on my phone to open it. They pull it in. They wipe. <laughs> I don't ask for this. This is just the thing. They wipe it off. They are the cars are already spotless. Yeah. So they wipe the whole wow. thing off in the garage, and then they like leave. Wow. Yeah, that's like what they've been doing. And then when they show up, they pull up, and like I pull the car out of the garage and park it outside, and like I like wave at them and just like go inside, and then they like wipe the say, car, wipe down. The car right. out. Yeah, yeah. Like so, I don't know if they're gonna continue doing press cards probably at all. have to well uh, no I, mean, I got an email from one from one OEM this morning that was like hey listen you know we may have to cancel we're like right now we're not going to but if the if they say if it gets you know more strict we're gonna have to cancel your upcoming which would super suck because yeah. it's a car I really want to drive <laughs> Um, oh, I'm sure they have to. They're just weighing all the pros and cons. Like, I don't know what the costs are. Like, if they pay a yeah. subscription to like Page One, which is a fleet management service, and yeah. do they come over and, you know, do, if they go 10 times and they bring Matt Ferrer a car 10 times, then it pays for that subscription for the month or whatever. But I'm sure it's monthly plus numbers of deliveries. Can we go to the yeah. wide? I can't look oh, at yeah. myself on that screen. Even when I glance over it, I feel ill. We just go to a. I just have such a self fucking loathing of like. Just that, just a camera that's just me. I mean, I, I get it. I, I, this is just the all irony. profile for me. So it's not great. I know. Well, when I'm sitting in that <laughs> chair doing doing the guest is over here, it's like my face takes up two thirds of the screen, and there's people who pay five dollars in the super yeah. chat to complain about. You it. look like a Star Wars <laughs> ship passing the camera slowly. <gasps> <clears throat> Nobody ever shot Brando in that. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> angle, like when people, can you go to the wood? No, please? people see me at like a Cars and Coffee or something, and they go, "Dude, I gotta say, like, you look super, super fit." And I'm like, "I'm standing, <laughs> like you see me, like <laughs> in this crutched up little well, ball. It's the worst possible position." Bill, to be Bill in. Burr said, "There's different levels of in shape. There's <laughs> like standing up wearing a shirt in shape. Right. There's standing up with a shirt off in shape, and then there's sitting down with abs." <laughs> He's like. <laughs> Everyone wants to be sitting down with abs. <laughs> yeah, we're not getting there anytime mm-hmm. soon. But I'm real glad I built a gym in my house. No I'm shit, using dude. the fuck out of it. Good. I am. I'm, I'm working on it. Uh, so that's I can check that off off the list. How press cars are getting delivered. Yeah, I mean, I, I wiped down the whole 86 when I gave it back to the guy, and he was very thankful. He's wearing a mask and everything. And yeah, yeah, I'm sure a it's a fucking disease that you don't know if you caught for a week. <laughs> That sucks. Mm-hmm. That sucks balls. I know. The Spring Breakers are going to have um, to do with two of those at least. Right. Because <laughs> STDs, you don't know for a while. Yeah. Uh, Irony of a couple uh, of all this, a couple businesses, like probably ca- just killing it right now and not just like ventilator companies like our sponsor, Butcher Box. 
the yeah. mail order meats. The, mail other, order the other day, I had a thought. I was like, man, these fucking, I bet you Butcher Box and like all these other mail order meats are just killing the game right now. And I got an email from them not 24 hours later that was like, um, can we bump our next ad spot to June? We are out of meats. Wow. <laughs> and I was like, oh shit, I was just having that thought. Uh, ground beef was hard to find in the store and I was reading a, uh, uh, whatever, a blurb on Facebook from someone living in Italy and they were like, ground beef is one of the things that's very hard really? to come by. It sells out really fast. Here's Here's another side a side business. I don't want to say someone is doing well, but someone is getting by. Charcoal, my favorite uh, steak restaurant in Venice, Chef Josiah Citron. I fucking love the place. I'm there like once a week probably. They obviously can't be open, but they want to keep their suppliers in business. So they have an online meat market. So you can go on there uh, on a website that they made and buy their meat raw and take it home and cook it. And I was Whoa. like, hell to the motherfucking yeah. And I got a uh, 48 ounce Wagyu porterhouse, raw, dry age, ready to go, 70 bucks. Jesus Christ. And I got a bunch of their skirt steak and I'm like, fuck yeah. Wow. <laughs> I, just, I, am, I just walk up to the door and show my receipt and they come out with a bag and hand it. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. People are, people are pivoting quickly. I mean, I said we wouldn't talk about this. But I know. That's a, that's, well, no, it's not. <laughs> that's a side I, I, thing. That's a side it, business. But yeah, yeah. That's a side business. That's just like interesting things that are popping up in our community. Mm -hmm. That and and the map is green. Can you pull up Google Maps oh right now? Has our map. <laughs> it's, folks? It's the only the only good thing about all this is you can really get around <laughs> if, you, if you gotta go somewhere. I mean, I haven't seen a green a green Google Maps in Los Angeles in the daytime. No, fuck out of here. I mean, it's if you have to, if you you can't, there's nowhere to go because businesses are all closed. But if you want to go for a drive, a little point A to point A, it's a good time. It's a real good I mean, time you to go, go for a drive. You can go to the canyons. I think, right? Would you get pulled over for that? Probably not. No, I don't. Th no, they're not pulling people no. over. They, they even said on TV, basically, some reporter was like, "How do you plan to enforce this?" And someone was like, "Well, well, basically, we kind of we're asking everyone to self enforce." Which, okay, yeah, but like. I think any reasonable person would believe that a point A to point A canyon drive is well within the spirit of that rule. I'm pl I plan on having them. What the fuck else am I going to do? Yeah. No, it's a good point. <laughs> I got press cars coming out of my fucking ass right now. We got that. Did we talk about the Volvo last show? We did, right? A, a little, little bit. bit. You had just gotten it when we talked about we pricing, can talk about interior, the Volvo, that kind of stuff. Because I really like it. I think the Volvo is actually quite excellent. And I've got, I just got like two hours ago, this Maserati Levante Trofeo, which is the first Maserati I've driven since 2014. I haven't driven any really? Maserati since 2014. Well, good, good news for you is they haven't changed much. Uh, this one, I've, I've well, never, this one's definitely I, better than the 2014 I drove. I'm poking fun because it, we went to Morocco last year for drive on NBC Sports, and Spinelli drove a uh, Maserati Gran Turismo oh. GTC. Well, the I Gran think. Turismo is like a and 2009. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, well, the they, Levante they, you know, was started, new for 17 or 18. They started making the <clears throat> Gran Turismo before the iPhone came out. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. That's a good gag. Yeah. Harris was like, you know how old this freaking <laughs> car is, dude? <laughs> And, older than and Mike the was like, it's amazing. He's like, it's older than the iPhone. That's really funny. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Is there any other car? iPhone's what? 07, I believe. The iPhone 1. I have the most distinct memory of the day the iPhone came out. It's like, where were you when when Kennedy was shot, 9-11 happened? And 07. Yeah, 07, right? I had, a, I had a New York Motor Club drive. Me and Larry did. And Noah Lehman Hoped, who was the co-owner of Gotham Dream Cars at the time, he's been on the podcast a couple times, he had just got his new iPhone right before the drive. And when I tell you this person's face was glued to this iPhone, you couldn't get him out of the iPhone. I mean, you could have waved, you know... Boobs covered in money the, with, yeah. with Ferrari keys. Titties yeah. dipped in honey and then dunked in cash. I mean, anything you could think of, you could have waved at him. And he was so glued to the iPhone. It was like it was like he had seen magic. And we, we were, was, there, was everyone just making fun of him? Like, oh, look at you. What are you, just locked into this thing? Why? Who cares? Pretty much, yeah. And I mean, you're, you're looking at the future. You didn't know. I mean, we un it, it was fucking cool. We all had Blackberries, and it was cool when he brought us, oh, I, I can see how that's that's the shit. Yeah, it felt like, it, it felt almost, remember how substantial the first iPhone yeah, felt? Was, yeah, like jewelry metal, almost, yeah. yeah. 
he was locked in because it was made of mostly metal and it glass is, yeah and the and blackberries were still like plastic with keys yeah. and whatever yeah ask morningstar he's still got one yeah he does <laughs> he does um you know what i just sidebar our 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 homie up here uh gino in the office mm-hmm. next door he got that new flip uh the flip folding touchscreen joint the one that the, the clamshell i think it's the yeah. razor new motorola razor they call it or something i think i don't know a lot about phones i'm sorry it's pretty rad I, there's no way that lasts for longer than six months. I, can, Folding I and agree. Closing it, and opening, you're just bending whatever it, kind it of- It could go either like, way, but you, he held cool, it like a 90 but, degrees like this, like an L, and the picture swept through the, through wow. the sweep, and I was like, oh, oh that's a party trick. It's yep, a good party that's trick. a good party trick. Yeah. And you know, when you close it up, it's like a square. It closes oh. into a square. Okay. And there's no- there's no screen on the outside, so if you drop it, it's kind of it. You know, it's so like it's a, like a flip phone, but with a sol- a full screen yeah, on the inside. Yeah, that's fucking. That's and it was crazy. pretty cool. I don't know. I don't know if I'm. I mean, I don't know if it's gonna make me give up my all Apple lifestyle, but it was pretty rad. I mean, they've been trying to make the whole like folding phone thing for a couple of years. It's, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's cool. A Galaxy Two Flip. That's that it yeah. Is. That's it. Yeah, yeah. You know what Vinny just brought home yesterday? Did you know Red makes a phone? Like red cameras? Yeah, they do. Vinny bought one and brought it what? home yesterday. I don't know why. I guess he needed something to do. He needed something to play with. It's got like a 3D camera on it. See, look at that. Pull that up. That's fucking cool. I mean, even though this is just their website, like when you see, if you've ever seen, haven't seen one of these yet, and someone scrolls something that moves past a 90 degree screen continuously. Just like water. Just pretty amazing. That's a really to- good party trick. Wow. I don't know. I hope I hope it lasts a long time because it is a yeah. cool thing. I yeah. just skeptical. Yeah. Um. Oh, okay. So here's another thing to talk about: <clears throat> Adventure Drives in June, uh, July. Excuse me, July. Rob Ferretti's uh thing. I signed up, and you know, uh, Omaze, the people who've been advertising with us. This is this is not an ad. Uh, there we we work together, me, Rob, and them, to give away a trip. So we're going Pacific Northwest. Me and Hannah are going. We have a we got a, a Lamborghini Urus, which I am actually really excited about because it's so comfortable. Mm, is it? Yes. I've only sat in it for like twenty minutes. Urus is so comfortable, and I even said, I'll show you the email. I go, I go. You know, I'm like, you know, thank you very much. It's a lot of miles. Like for a lamb for any Lamborghini, it's like a. I'm gonna put three thousand miles in this thing. Like that's a lot wow. for a Lamborghini. Yeah. So, so it was very nice of them to hook it up. Um, but and I'm gonna do a story and all, all this stuff. But uh, I was like, one request, uh, please no yellow. <laughs> I was like, please, please yeah. I've please seen some no. of those running around LA. They have a blue that's nice. There's a good blue, um, yeah. Gray, black gray, are really black. nice. There's a, like a dark red that's pretty cool. But like yellow is no bueno. Yellow is so Pontiac as it. It looks very much like a movie car. If you yeah. if you took that exact car and put it in any kind of Mad Maxi water world like dystopian future mm-hmm. kind of thing Judge Dreddish like it would just work yeah. just take the badge off be like yep sure but Roof. very fast very comfortable and more importantly uh, a big a big back seat because we're trying to get a uh, possible Thaddeus trip uh, we'll probably have oh, more. it'll yeah. probably be three people you know on, on that trip but we're working with Omaze and I'm going to be advertising it so you're going to have to listen to me advertise it for the next month um, we're giving away a, a pair of tickets on adventure drives so it's like a, a couple or a group of two uh ferretti is providing a rented c8 corvette and it's wow all the airfare um all the taxes all the all the shit everything you need uh and it's gonna be a thousand bucks in cash for gas wow so that's really solid they're gonna be giving that away so you literally are gonna get to go on a uh, road trip with me and um, the charity is going to be Team Rubicon which is which I didn't choose um, but I, I know them uh, it's uh, a charity where that takes uh, ex military and uh, trains them and deploys them for disaster response oh wow so they can kind of like, like really keep the, the sort of combat excitement adrenaline thing uh, going as well as you know feel uh, feel feel and be productive uh, uh, in the world. Yeah, that seems like and a really do good more organization. Than just have a regular job. Yeah, I'm I'm about that. So it's not really announced until the 24th, which actually might be when this show airs officially. Yeah. Um. So I don't have the link just yet. Um. But 
this whole area, like this route. Oh, did he put is, the map up? Yeah, he put oh, the map up. Oh, he put up. the map up. Oh, uh, so what are the what are the uh, what are the spots? Can I think you, you he start did? in Seattle, drive north to Vancouver, little past it, turn east uh, through a place called North Cam- to Vancouver, Cam- and then Whistler. And yeah, I mean that's all that it's. This map is not detailed enough to show that, but you go through Whistler, which is stunning. I mean, the whole road climbing out of Vancouver was awesome. Yeah. When we drove to Whistler, it was amazing. And then you go into Banff National Park, which is the most stunning place I've ever been to. That's any kind of like alpine terrain, mm-hmm. mountainous terrain. Um, like if you like Half Dome at Yosemite, this has like seven of those. And then you go south down to uh, Glacier National Park, uh, Flathead I think. National Forest, I think, and. And then to Yellowstone. Wow. It's a badass drive. <laughs> That's a really cool drive. Yeah. And then you know what wow. you know what I figured out in doing the math for the request for the car? From Jackson Hole, Wyoming, where it ends. Because mm-hmm. I was trying to figure out what the most cost effective way was to get a Urus there. So it was like, okay, do we ship it, you know, do I go round trip Seattle to Seattle or do I drive it up from LA or what what's the deal, right? So Jackson Hole to back to Seattle. Mm-hmm is less than 100 miles shorter than Jackson Hole to Los Angeles. Less than 100 miles difference. No way. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Isn't that weird? <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. It's like 870 miles from Jackson Hole to Seattle and 940 miles from Jackson Hole back to LA. Can you? So you're just driving back here? We're going to drive back to LA. Yeah, mix, otherwise yeah. you're just adding a flight you don't need. Cool. Yeah. And that'll be, and then you can pick a different route back. That's yeah. Well, I mean, there's a lot of opportunity going from Jackson Hole to LA. Get a little flexible. Add a few more miles, and I mean, and assuming see some stuff. look, assuming you know, we have a fucking you know civilization and can do this trip. And did you see that picture of Vegas closed? Fucking hell. No, I didn't. Yeah, I closed, was supposed to go there. They closed Las Vegas, man. Uh, Sam Smith was going to do a vintage race out there, like in two weeks, and I was going to go hang out, and that got canceled. Oh, um, yeah. um, so that's a thing. And then uh, for the safari rally, the Keen Safari Rally, which for now is still on, even though the date is supposed to be uh, June 1st, we're going from um, <clears throat> Phoenix to Vegas um, off-road the whole way, uh, which will be real cool. It's going to be 12 safaris. Road and Track Magazine is coming, and but and it's not me <laughs> who's writing it, which at first I was kind of like, what the fuck? And then I was like, no, no, I get to be a part of the story, but I don't actually have to do anything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we're paying customers, yeah. bro. We're there and we're there on recreation. But it's you a know, lot more fun that way. I got I got hit up by uh, the head of marketing or one of the marketing directors from Thule. Oh, so okay. we're getting the cargo basket. Cool. And then we're getting Thule like outdoor all weather duffels. For our gear, so you put it all in there, up in the cargo basket. Yeah, it's not yeah. airtight, right? The cargo baskets, like there's a little the gap. basket. It would get dusty, I'm sure. No, it's a basket. It's not a box. Oh, right. It's That's a basket. Why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the but the but you can hose the duffels off even with your shit in them. Whoa, they're they're dust weatherproof. That's yeah, really like cool. the rubberized joints. So how totally, long is the trip? I don't know. It's like 800 miles off road. Oh, okay, so it's far. how big's your frunk in that car? So the frunk is decent, but. There's a strut tower brace that goes across it, which sort of hacks away at your usability of it. So you can fit like some stuff up there. Really like backpacks up there probably. Yeah, and you've got room, you know, a bunch of room behind the seats, but it's but the seats don't really move enough, so anything that goes behind the seats has to fit like up and over the seats. And you got to want it to live there for like the day cuz to get it back out is kind it's of It's kind bitch. of annoying. Yeah. So the basket is actually going to be pretty convenient. Cool. Yeah, can you add lights to the basket? We're not doing night. Um, we're not doing you know, night off. I have so many it. lights on the front, and That's we're not true. doing night off roading. And actually, the answer is no, because well, you could add them, but you couldn't light everything up. Lee told me that my car, between the air conditioning, the radio with the upgraded speakers and the amp, and the and the lights and all of that. It's it's kind of pushing the alternator. You're already drawing. I'm already drawing a quite a lot. I have an upgraded battery in my car for that reason. Okay. Um, and I've had a. I've only. It's only ever come up once. Like in Mammoth, it was ice cold and snowing, and the car had just been started, and I like turned everything on, and it kind of like it did a little of that. Mm. It's the only time it ever happened. Okay. Yeah. It was just because the battery. It, electronics that are really cold don't really work. Great. I turned two of the four fog lights off, and it and it went away. It oh, was only when cool. everything was on. 
You can yeah, you can turn them on in pairs, right? You can't. It's not all individual. It's like two inside outside. Yeah, yeah. Because right, one's short throw, long throw. Correct. Yeah, the outside is a short throw, and the inside is a long throw. I think. Dude, this is gonna be so cool. Eight hundred miles on dirt. Yeah, it'd be fucking. I mean, we, so we haven't done anything dope. like that in a long time. Yeah, in a good car. Not even. Yeah, <laughs> that's the other, yeah, good point. We've we've done it multiple times in terrible cars. I really wanted to do it. I mean, I'm, it's a shame this the the Bronco has probably been delayed, but I've been pitching the road and track that I really want to do, you know, new Defender and 1997 Defender, North American spec Defender, and then new Bronco and 1997 OJ Bronco. I want to do both of those on the, you know, all four of those vehicles on the Southern California backcountry discovery route, but I think... I would like to off road the what is it? That's the third gen Bronco, the OJ one. The OJ one, yeah. Like I've I've been in them very briefly, but and they felt very truckish and they're huge. And I've heard like they're they're pretty capable because it's like a. Blazer. I think you got to like do some things. You just got to do some shit. Like it's like an F one fifty. It's a yeah. short F one fifty. So you just got to like, like do some shit, it. and then it's probably okay. It's solid axle. The second gen Bronco, I always saw it as even as a kid, and I was like, I don't get you. <laughs> like it's so small, and it had that it had the cab cover with the rounded glass at the top. Wait, like, you mean the Bronco that two? For? Yeah. Oh, the Bronco two. Yeah. It the- like. Well, the Bronco 2 is just a Ranger SUV in the same way that the Blazer so, was an S10. But somehow it looks smaller and worse than a Ranger to me. Like, I love the Bronco 1. <laughs> Good luck finding then, a like, clean Bronco one. 2. I I'm, 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 I'm with you. Bronco 2 suck. I'm with you. They're fucking lame. But my boy Jimmy DeFonts back in the day had that Ranger, that late 80s Ranger with the two-tone. Yeah. See, that's not a bad Bronco 2. That's an okay. I bet you if you found a mint one of those, it would bring decent money. I mean, it would do that, but I don't know. Something, not something nice. about like the, the roof glass, like the whole, hey, do you want to look at the tree branch you're driving under? That, I've never understood that, uh, the, <laughs> that, that the rounded glass the, at the top. The rounded glass? I think they got it from Japan. I think they stole it from Japan. Actually, what no, you, old cars in the 50s had rounded, had, had rounded glass. Like the that first uh, El Camino or, or had the, that had the rounded rear window. I love that. No, no, I love the, ra- sorry, I like the wraparound glass laterally it's when it's the vertical kind of like the you don't like when it goes into the top into the roof there's no dinosaurs where we live i'm not looking up at, at i don't know bro you don't want to be a in a car? greenhouse you what don't have, want your car to what be? have you ever looked up at at that specific angle from a car that you couldn't see from the normal window and gone there it is <laughs> i don't um, know if you know what if lamborghini know. made that in there in the huracan <laughs> that then i'd want it because it's Is like, because it? the roof in a lot of these sports cars, I've had this problem in a bunch of cars. I've had this problem in um, Huracans, and then I've had it in Viper, and I've had it in the Supra, I've had it in the GTR, where I can fit in it once I get in it, yeah. but you can't see above the door handles of the car next to you. Oh, okay. Because, yes. it's, because yes. it comes down. Right, right, right. You have right. to kind of duck under it to get out. So that that's when I would want that window. That's there. fair. Yeah, McLaren will come up with that they before will, anybody because they have the glass like <laughs> they put glass and, and all kinds of funky which is, <laughs> which is really cool. I mean, I think does that help with the three quarter visibility when you're you know looking over your shoulder in like a seven twenty? Oh shit, yeah, in the Spider. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, the glass buttresses. It's amazing how Super much cool more you idea. can see with that. Yeah, the glass buttresses, and then in the McLaren GT that I just had, that had extra windows where you don't normally see windows in a supercar either, and those help too. It had some extra windows, like so in the rear three quarter area. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, I can't exactly describe in the rear three quarter area. I'm also a punch and a half down. <laughs> I'm feeling a little, a little Count, punchy. Counting punches. A little punchy. Counting punches. Taking punches. Taking <clears throat> shots. Um. Oh, I can cr- look all these things. Look, I can cross. So rewarding to have a list and cross things oh, off. Shit. So you know who designed the uh, Maserati Gran Turismo? Jason Castriota, my Jason old friend. Jason Castriota. Yeah. He is doing something. Well, I hope they're going to survive this. He was doing this that thing with SSC. Yeah. The Tuatara. Mm-hmm. Which is did really you shoot, cool looking. Did you shoot some B-roll for them? No, I shot the Zinger. Oh, the Zinger. Can we talk about the Zinger yet? No, right? I mean, we did a little bit. Uh, but no, we can. They've done, they've done their press release. I like. I mean, I can't review you don't it and drive it. it anyway, but it- Did someone drive it? No. Oh, okay. Not that I know of. Oh. Uh, I, I met someone that you were that in, in one of your shows. No, no, no. We just shot um B roll for it. So they were gonna you know, they were gonna debut at Geneva. Right. Geneva didn't happen. So what they did is they rolled out some videos. Like I mean Shmi shot it. They rolled out a video um with 
the photographer that was there who I, I'd never met before. He did like a tutorial on studio shooting with the car in the studio we were in, which was pretty rad. Like oh, how Larry to light Chen-esque. and bounce. Um, and you know, they just kind of like, they released the specs on it. They, they did their debut. I think they built their booth somewhere. I, um, I heard Harris talking about that cause they were so like, excited about what yeah. they've done they're like fuck it we're building our booth here at the, at wherever <laughs> we are set it up like outside or something like that and uh and they just did it to <clears> the show geneva it. thing man i've talked to a couple of folks um recently that were involved in various aspects of the geneva auto show and, and what a shit show it is um one of our one of our uh my, our mutual friends zach uh was working for a client and, and we don't need to talk it doesn't matter who it is but they you know they sent a whole booth worth of shit over there you know and and including actual cars yeah you know and uh and they basically they got canceled but they were able to get the cars out of uh customs and drive them around switzerland up in the alps for a while okay good. so he was like okay we got something out of it and we went to visit some some clients around europe in the cars and whatever like okay but then i heard um did you hear john ward was on rogan did you download it yet i didn't download it yeah yet. john ward was on Rog rogan <laughs> fucking the first five minutes of the show they're talking shit about my safari <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah that's funny. <laughs> but um but he said he sent the uh, electric derelict over to Geneva for uh, it was going to be in someone's booth a you know Michelin or some some adjacent manufacturer and um it's like stuck in like customs in Belgium or something, you know, TBD when it will be released, no one knows anything. I mean, yeah, everything's going to take a lot longer than mm -hmm. you think just these days. Uh, I got an email from UPS that was like, here's what we're doing if your package doesn't show up. Like, come, <laughs> come to this place, it's, it'll be here for 14 days, maybe. So, yeah, um, that's a bar. Well, I'm glad they got to drive around a little bit, though, and get some content. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The Swiss Alps are <clears throat> Swiss Alps are good. Yeah, if you're going to be alone. Do they have speed cameras up there, too? Not in the mountains. No, once you're up on those alpine passes, you can pretty much mob. It's really on the t in the tunnels, and then on the on the motorways. Yeah, we got stuck on one of those trying to go uh, to Le Mans through Italy. Well, I, we did, Spinelli did, and they got to like the end of the road, and there was just a thing down that was like, nope. Yeah. And I went, ah, shit. And so they stop and eat a sandwich, and suddenly a local just drives, like, from the closed side. <laughs> did the thing where they're like, yeah, it's not that bad. I'm going. I'm going. I'm not going around. I live here. And, you know, they just watch this car pop out, and they're like, oh, I guess, should we do it? And they ended up detouring because they didn't they're not doing risk it. it. Yeah, because yeah. they're in the GT3 RS. They're yeah. like, what if there is snow? Yeah. Like, this guy's driving No, I went whatever. around one of those closed roads in the Angeles Forest after a snowstorm. and uh... But you were in the correct vehicle. I was, but I drove until I was no longer in the correct. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Me and Marco did. Yeah. As soon um, as you got to the place where you're like, you need tracks for this. Yeah. Is that the singer you got up there? Yeah. It's a good looking car. I mean, uh, all these cars are starting to kind of look the same, but it's a good looking car. It, it looks pretty different because it's all center seat, so it's front, yeah, you know, front yeah, seat, yeah, back seat. True. Um, it looks so much narrower than any other car I've seen. And I don't know the measurements of it compared to other supercars, hypercars, but just visually, because the, the canopy, you know, you're sitting in line. I mean, it, a lot of cars get described as being, as looking like fighter jets or something. This is the truest, I think, interpretation of that, just because of that, that seating Because of the layout. seating configuration. Yeah, yeah. If you, it's if crazy. If you look at it from the direct side profile, then it looks a bunch like other stuff if you start the more you bend it around to the front or the rear you go oh wait that's actually like a foot narrower than like a lamborghini or yeah something. it's pretty amazing and it's uh it's like i don't know 2700 pounds or something like that and it's going to be you well, know coming 3D in various printed horsepowers. technology as well right yeah that's their big thing is that the company that owns it has been a 3d printer for a while and uh i talked the, to these guys like a year ago before they had this, when they had that blade thing that was the yeah, first the purple one, one, the purple one, and I was trying, they were trying to get me to do a story for Road and Track about 3D printed technology, and I was like, I'm happy to do that, I want to drive the car. Mm -hmm. And they were like, can you just do a story about 3D printed technology? And I was like, yeah, when I drive the car. And they were like, the car's not really what we're selling, and I go, I know, but I need something exciting. You know what I mean? I, I don't really want to just do a story about a factory or a technology. I want to have an experience that, you know, and so they ultimately didn't want me driving the car and I kind of I kind of dropped it. I hope I can circle back with them and drive this thing. This seems like a, a I, real well, I car. Think, this is funny. Alex Goy did this uh, in February. Um, 
I think maybe when they were contacting you originally, that car was the purple car was very much just them demonstrating the technology, and now they're like making the car. I think that's and, probably true. Uh, well, their pitch was that they could bring the three D printers anywhere in the world, send out the the files. They're not CAD files, but they're whatever you what do you call a three D printer file? Is it I, CAD file? I have no idea. Maybe it's a CAD file. I don't know. The, the file to, pr- to print the shit. <laughs> GIF. Yeah. It's a GIF. It's a, it, just, <laughs> it's a GIF. it just moves around. <laughs> and uh, and then, you know, you could assemble it, you know, like Ikea furniture. So so we're looking at these photos, which are on rodentrack.com. Um, like, the whole frame is 3D printed and then, like, bondo, not bondo, but, like, bonded together in pieces. But the really cool thing that I noticed was the suspension arm. It, they're able to make these shapes that like you can't get from forging, casting, mm. or pressing because that's just how machinery works. So they their control arm, it look I mean it looks like an octopus that you're stretching out or like it looks like muscles in your arm. It really really yeah, does. Yeah, yeah. And I picked it up and fuck, dude, it was like I swear to God, it weighed less than this teacup. It weighed less than that espresso cup. I picked up, I started laughing. Was it made of titanium, it's titanium. or something? Oh, it's yeah. It's 3D printed titanium. Yeah. And it's strong enough to withstand, you know, 1,200 horsepower mm-hmm. and all the G-forces and all the stuff. But it's because they can, like, really specifically, they can figure out, like, where does the, str- the strength need to be and not be instead of just pressing this, like, giant arm right. that needs to be strong everywhere. And I was amazed. Like, I was There was really a guy amazed. we had on the Watch and Listen podcast, me and Cameron, who was coming out with a new watch that used a lot of 3D printing in the case and they were making shapes that it was impossible to mill and it was impossible to yeah. to to carve, you know, that you could only uh, make by adding and not by taking away. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, you can yeah. like, you can rotate a shape and then add more there and there. And I mean, you, I don't know what the possibilities are, but they mm-hmm. seem pretty limitless. <clears throat> and so, you know, that's what they do. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how fast it is when people start driving it and testing it and everything. But it should be bananas. Like, I want to drive it. Who the fuck doesn't want to drive a a, a sing, an inline driving position car? Really cool. I want to fuck with that. I want. You know what I really want to fuck with is one of those leaning. Remember those like enclosed those enclosed pod three wheeler things that lean. I'd love to try one of them. I bet they're. I bet they're the coolest. What were those called? Uh, I don't remember. I think they're made by. Piaggio, they probably mm, made one. Probably, I don't know. Someone's gonna be. Well, Piaggio made the three wheeling scooter, which I have ridden. Uh, but there was one that was like a two car pod that like was a like that leaned like this, but it was like a, kind of like a car, like this thing. Yeah, Whoa, what is that? <laughs> Tilting three wheeler. Uh, yeah, kind of like <laughs> kind of like that. What is that called? This Van- is the Vandenbrink Carver. <laughs> yeah, the Carver. The Vandenbrink the, the, Carver. The Carver. That was what it was called. The Carver. Yeah. It looks cool. It was a thing. It, it basically was a three-wheeler, and it was this pod that would lean into wow. corners, and it, it was sort of somewhere between a motorcycle and a car. Look at um, that. The guy's dragging his hand on the ground. Like like he's surfing. Yeah, I mean, look how cool that is. The lean machine. Yeah, when is that article from, Zach? That's how old is that's, that? Gotta be, I think that's a rendering. Uh, this no. is 04. Yeah, that's an old-ass article. I remember that picture really, really well. They lean the fuck Dude, out of they these really things. do. They lean them right down. I mean, and I, if I recall, they have a handlebar and not a steering wheel, and a, like a motorcycle what? Uh, throttle uh, setup. It's, it's a handlebar, I think. That's I'd love amazing. to get an interior shot of that, of the Van, Vandenbrink Carver. What a terrible name. I mean, Carver's where a good it, name. God, I hate Pinterest. Where, I sometimes, wonder where even if you have your, sometimes even if you want a car named after yourself, you just got to realize your name sucks. <laughs> like, yeah. Not everybody that's true. can be Ford <laughs> or it's, Ferrari. It, <laughs> some it's pe- simple. It's short. You know, Some people's names just suck. You should, should not be. And if that's not your name... Oh God! You oh is, is that a steering wheel? Is that it? Is it a steering wheel? I thought it had. It a handlebar. looks like a steering wheel. Wow! I mean, this thing leans. Would, that's it, if you were leaning degrees? down like that, it's pretty far. Yeah. If you were leaning in something like that, would you prefer handlebar or steering wheel? Mm-hmm. Handlebar, because, because it would I'd be, be like used to leaning, handlebar, or like a bicycle. Be, yeah, because snowmobiles don't lean that much. 
Now, the question I have is if you're in this kind of lean on this roundabout this gentleman's on, and suddenly the car in front of you stops, do you just like hit the brakes and then tip over? <clears throat> like you if low, you, you low side I it? mean, you probably can't just fall over, but you, this guy is I think easily at 45, the limit, 45 degrees. And if you just suddenly stopped, like, I don't know, would you pull it? Would it, would it knock you right over? I wonder if as you come to a stop, if it stands itself up. That's what the scootery things did, right? It doesn't stand itself up. What the what the Piaggio um, MP3 the scooter had was, it had a locker on it, like a, a button to lock it, which would lock it at whatever angle it was That's at. Right. So if you were leaned over, you could hit that button and lock it leaned over. Now you're probably thinking, why the fuck would anybody want to be able to lock it leaned over? Well, the answer is if you parked it on a side hill, you might want to have it not totally wow. you know what i'm saying yeah you could park it on like sideways on a crazy steep hill and it and still stand it up straight and lock it there so that was very, very interesting clever. yeah it's very clever and you could come to a stop with it at a red light and if you were you know straight up you'd hit the button just before you came to the stop and you wouldn't have to put your feet down it would just lock it there and as soon as you hit the throttle it would unlock like the second cool. you hit throttle, it just unlocks. Was it, like an was it an electric motor that held yeah, it in place? Like a gyro or yeah, something? yeah, yeah, an electric, electric, That's really like, cool. to, like brake that held it in between. It was like this cool, like locker. That Piaggio MP3 was one of those things that was so dorky to ride around. You just you didn't want to ever be seen riding it, but it rode so good. It rode absolutely, it's by far the best riding scooter I've ever ridden. Really? They're crazy fast for what they are. They're, it's, a, it's a 600. It's a 600. It's like 110 miles an hour, this bike. Whoa. And you can lean them, like go back to Google Images and find a picture of a guy like really leaning one down, or a girl. Uh, because you can like, you can get crazy angles on these things and they go fucking fast. Oh, so that's the 500, I rode the 600. Um, but uh, they 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 really do hold. But they're so dorky. Like nobody ever wants to be seen riding one. But I, occasionally I see folks. It's of the three wheeled motorcycles. It's the least. Whoa. Yeah. Dude, all right. This doesn't guy's like dragging Adam. a knee. Doesn't look like Adams. This <laughs> like is that. dragging a knee. Yeah, that guy's. Oh, well, he's bobbing. Look, he's lifting oh a wheel God. too. He's on. He's a two wheel motion. He's got a wheel in the air. Wow. This is a. I don't know. Some, it's a picture, and it's got Japanese writing, so it looks like it's definitely over in Japan. But that is gnarly. <laughs> that is really gnarly. Isn't it funny that these like they're dorky because they're the pocket protector of motorcycles, right. kind of? Yeah. Or like they're they're like the helmet of helmet. I don't know. They're it's like. I bet you in and twenty yet, years they're, they're going to be total collector's items. Well, if they don't tip over, that's nice. Like, yeah, you know, they, they it makes sense. Well, that's the other thing with the locker is you don't need a kickstand. Yeah. You just press the button and then you turn it off and it stays locked. What was the other the Caterham? Didn't it, uh, no no. What's the company that made oh, the Can Am? Can Am. They made one as well. So the Can Am Spider is, in my opinion, the lamest <laughs> of these because it doesn't lean at all. It's literally it's a snowmobile with wheels. So That's you steer a, a it a thousand what it is. Yes. Yeah, you steer it yeah. like a snowmobile and it doesn't lean like a snowmobile. It has a snowmobile engine basically. It's a snowmobile. I got to say I I did not like cornering quickly when we went snowmobiling. It is a weird feeling to not have any lean any body roll really. You don't you can't lean into the corner like a motorcycle. So you just you you just I felt it the whole time just trying to pull to the outside yeah. and trying to pull my legs that way and I was trying to you know, you try to lean over the, the inner part of the snowmobile, but it always felt, it just felt unnatural. I think that's because we tourists were riding snowmobiles on groomed trails that were basically like canyon roads, True. but paved kind of, or, or but groomed. And like Ken Block goes out and rides them in powder. And when you're riding a snowmobile in powder, I think you're doing more carving like a jet ski and not like what the like stupid tourists like us do. That's true. And they're, I think their snowmobiles are meant for like getting to a place mm. or you can like jump them and that stuff. But it's like, yeah, you go straight and then you turn to go to your place. It's not like you don't go canyon carving for fun the way yeah. you do with a motorcycle. Right. But this, I guess this to me, maybe that's the same thing. These three wheel things. It's like, yeah, ride it to work, ride it home. You can't fall over. By by just stopping, and that's nice. Yeah, if you're physically unable to ride a motorcycle anymore, and you got to do something that feels kind of like a motorcycle, like all right, fine. Like yeah. I'm not gonna sh just point and laugh at you, but like, 
it, these the Can Am specifically is basically a snowmobile with wheels on it. That's pretty much what wow. it is. the The slingshot is, <laughs> is the one I really don't like because the slingshot is it 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 wants to be a car so <laughs> badly. I'm just like you guys, but it can't be. For a lot of really important reasons, <laughs> like reasons that are like life and death reasons. That's that's kind of what bums me out about the slingshot. Like not that it drives badly, which it does it drives very badly. Not that it's made of plastic, which it is. It's made of ATV plastic, but that it the only reason it has three wheels and therefore the only reason it exists is because there's a loophole that allows for something that has three wheels to not have any safety features whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Well, if it has a, if it's classified as a motorcycle, right? Right. But like, I think that, you know, because it feels like a car in terms of it has a seat and pedals and a steering wheel and a seat belt, it, you know, you mentally, you think it's a car and it's definitely just like not. And whereas, I just I and it's not it's not fun enough that it's worth the risk. Not that I think there's nothing out in the world that's worth taking a dangerous risk for. There definitely are those things, but like bro, <laughs> the, the risk reward is not there. Yeah. You can buy a sports car for $10,000 that is way more fun to drive than this and like was designed to be crashed into at some point in history. I mean not to mention, you know, we're looking at one on Kelly Blue Book and it's it's used, uh, and it's thirty six thousand dollars. The fuck out of here! They're like, like twenty two grand new. I, I mean, I feel like you could buy a, <laughs> a ten thousand dollar Miata and probably have basically the same experience, yeah. but in a car that has two wheels on the back, has better traction, better balance. You know, a Lotus Elise looks exotic too. Yeah, you know what I mean. These, so these look like a transformer. They the uh, they, they look like a transformer's hand fell on the ground and someone turned it into a car, like on you, Junkyard Wars or something. <laughs> You hate to stereotype because I like to think of myself as a progressive and progressives probably shouldn't stereotype. But every time I see a Polaris slingshot on the street, it's driven by the exact person I expect to be driving it. I think they um, they got really popular with just like rental places. But yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. it's almost like, do you want an amusement park experience outside, like outside of a park? So they rent it for four hours, like L.A., Miami, whatever. And people cruise around and they're 24 and yeah. and i've seen i've se i like to see that i can tell when they just rented it and i can tell when they've had it for three hours i swear to god it's the face on the passenger the, yep. the passenger's face is really they're so smiley when it's brand new mm -hmm. and then three hours in they're just like there's no roof it's hot the interior is black it's plastic like you don't want to touch anything in there when it gets warm they're facing straight ahead silently straight ahead <laughs> this windshield like maybe covers their nipples <laughs> It doesn't seem like a great experience. They've had several rocks to the leg. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're getting bees shot up your pants. Um, yeah. You can't fit any of the girls you're but hollering at. But then I it. see a lot of the same uh, <laughs> men, and there, there's middle-aged men. It's the kind of middle-aged man that previously had some sort of chopper that had like a 32-inch front wheel. You know those guys, the choppers? Oh, yeah, yeah. With the, oh, yeah. And then huge stereos. They graduate. They have these things, too. They graduate to these things, where it's the you know the chopper, not the extended fork chopper. It's like a Harley Fat Boy, but it's got like a thirty-two inch rim in the front and like neon. You know what I'm talking about? Those are crazy bikes. They I've are. Seen I don't know how you ride like, them. Wow, that's it's like a penny farthing, but it's a motorcycle. You know, <laughs> it's definitely you don't see them very often. Farthing. It's like it's really strange. Not anymore. I saw them for um, like a while. I don't. What do you even Google? <laughs> what do you what, chopper huge what front is that, wheel? Let's what is see. that style? Hey, yeah, that there works. you go. That's it. That's exactly the style I'm talking about. <laughs> the penny Damn it. Yeah. That's so funny now that you said penny farthing. <laughs> I can't unsee that shit. <laughs> I've made a motorized motor uh, bicycle. <clears throat> come on, come on. The Yo, penny farthing it, with an I engine. I mean, how gangster would it be if someone made one of those front wheel drive and went all the way penny farthing? <laughs> Jeez, that would be... You can't turn at speed. I mean, the gyroscopic effect, like it's already there. Holy shit. <laughs> But Look those, that. yeah, that that's the one exactly. The person who rides that also has a slingshot that they financed for seventy nine dollars a month for one hundred and forty four months. Did you ever see the Panther motorcycle? No, but please show me. What do we got? 
Uh, hope this is the right thing to search. Uh oh. Oh boy. Oh boy. You real and you're screen sharing right now. You're oh, fucking Oh, you're bold. Is this what happens when I feed you jungle juice? You forget when you are and are not sharing screen. I forget that sometimes anyway. Um What it well while you're fucking Googling because okay, this is so not there's good a guy radio. I think what he was in Br- Yeah, I found it. Oh, we, yeah. We've looked at this before. Yes. <laughs> but for anyone who hasn't seen it. Oh, it's been a while. Hello, it's been old a while. friend. <laughs> uh, there's a guy that shaped a motorcycle fairing to look like a leaping jaguar. Yeah, like a hood ornament, like a jaguar hood ornament. But like the size of a human being. And uh, it extends out from the handlebars of the motorcycle like a good two and a half feet. And the best part is when he's riding Riding it, my motorcycle was not exciting enough. I wanted to also feel like I was having butt sex with a jungle cat. That's it's exactly what it looks like. It's 100% what it looks like. It does not look like he's riding this thing. It looks like he's inside it and it's trying to run from him. Oh, God. Um, it's, really, it's really fucked up. Also, art. It's art as well. It is. Do you have a, it I is. mean, wait, are there multiple? Because like that one's black. and They're copycats. Is that a copycat wow. or like, is it, was there a series of this Panthers? One's just brush metal. There's probably copycats. Pull up the chrome. Let's take a look at the chrome because honestly, it's a little better. It is better because you can tell. <laughs> wow. It's better. You know what would make it cool? If it was not a Panther, if it was like the HR Geiger uh, microphone stand like Jonathan Davis from Corn used. But a microphone? But I, a don't, microphone. I don't know that reference. I have to look you it don't? up. No. Oh, my Jonathan Davis from Corn had the coolest mic stand of all time. And it was made by H.R. Geiger, who was designed the alien from Aliens and did a bunch of fucking crazy shit. Oh, my God. The picture of the guy riding, guy riding a Jaguar. So wow. He. And he's making an O face, as it turns out. He's really. He's right before fruition. Very serious. It's oh my god! What an it? It's it's weird. It's really really strange. I mean, it, your dick. So is I hear direct. you're a hunter. You've traveled and shot a lot of stuff, huh? You want to go to the next level, friend? I got an idea for you. Ever fucked a jaguar while it ran away? No. <laughs> Strap on. This is amazing. Everyone needs to just Google jaguar motorcycle and go to images, and you'll oh, see what we're talking man. about. Wow. <laughs> I picture like Orange County <laughs> Choppers, like Pauly Jr. and Pauly Sr. fighting about it. Pauly Jr. is going to be like, Dad, it really looks like you're fucking the Jaguar when you're buying it. No, cut, it doesn't. Cut away. <laughs> fucking Pauly doesn't know yeah. what he's talking about. I've fucked Jaguars in my day, and it looks nothing like that. This is a powerful animal. <laughs> you don't know. You don't respect anything. That's why we're going to... like they, they just argued oh all the time God. about everything. Remember, did you ever come with, were you with me when we did that? What? No, that was pre-coming to California when me, it was me, Tom, and JF filming the NC MX-5. It was either the last episode of Garage 419 or the first episode of The Smoking Tire. I think it was the first episode of The Smoking Tire. Um, and we were we went to Orange County Choppers. It was weird. In a wow. <laughs> there was a Miata meet at an Orange County Choppers. That's oh, that's, oh, that's that John is, Davis's mic stand from Corn. That is quite the mic stand. Isn't that a picture worth Googling? Yeah. That's the coolest mic stand ever. Like, even if you're not a fan of Corn, like, that's an incredible piece of metal work from H.R. Geiger. That's true. Yeah. It's uh, like a little bit of, um, what was the robot movie with the chicks? Like, that meets aliens. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, uh, Ex Machina. Ex Machina. Yeah, yeah. What's the guy who did Aliens? That's the same guy who made yeah. this. But if you were a singer, right, wouldn't you be annoyed that, like, the guitarists and the drummer, like, they have cool equipment. Like, what do you have if you're a singer? Fucking that's nothing. Point. That's Well, that's why Steven Tyler has all the scarves. He does the he scarves. He is his own mic stand. Like, Elton John has the fucking, you know, the glitter mic. And, well, and uh, the Michael Jackson had the big glitter, the big fucking diamond D mic. And so John Davis has his H.R. Geiger uh, mic stand. This thing's stands. crazy. It's rad, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty amazing. And then Axl Rose had the one where he would, he would take the top half off. He would disconnect oh, it. Oh, I and thought then, he would just then, carry it around. No, no, he would disconnect the bottom half, and then he would rock the sort of the two-foot sort of top half of the mic. Uh. Yeah, the triangle. It would have a triangle on it after a while, and he would pull the triangle section off of the stand. Oh, so he could hold it. Oh, so my God, it's a triangle, it. so he could hold it like a guitar. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> That's so funny. That's like singers, they need their equipment. I was in a band in college. And we, we weren't great, but we were fun. We played at a bar every Sunday night for two years. We played at this bar. And I liked my guitar gear, and everyone had our cool gear. But my singer, Mike, he was he looked just like Johnny Knoxville. 
and he was a pretty decent singer, but he was a fucking drunk, and he was a dick when he was drunk. And he, you know, I had an SUV. I had this Mercury Mountaineer. And so I was the guy in the band with the SUV. And so all the gear went in my in my truck, right? The drums and the fucking everything went in the truck. It was like it, from, we practiced in the basement of my apartment building in college. And it was like we'd have it was like three trips to the bar oh, every geez. Sunday to load all the shit to the bar and then load it all home. It was it was, a, a lot. It was work. But Mike, the singer, <laughs> would show up at the bar like 20 minutes before the gig with a little wooden box with his microphone in it and go, I've got my gear. And I was like, you want to hit him in the face. Fuck. And you know, he was a good singer and he looked just like Johnny Knoxville, but he's like, I'm going to go early, early. I got a tech. <laughs> 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 like the harmonica, harmonica player. You'd have like a bottle you know? of Jack and the microphone and a wooden box and go, I'm ready. Oh, right. Cowbell guy. <laughs> kind of similar. All right. We have lots of questions. Do we? Okay. Well, listen, I appreciate everyone's questions. I'm going to preemptively say that for the sake of having an entertaining show, if Zach determines your question is overly oh. repetitive from what we have heard in the past, he reserves the right to skip it. And that's because, not because we don't appreciate you, it's because we don't guarantee shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a, no, we appreciate all of you, but sometimes your questions are repetitive and they make me scream at the computer. So we're not going to do that. Oh no, Zach is really scrolling very far down. <laughs> oh no, 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 I'm not. I'm okay. just, I'm just kind of looking through how many we, all right, we, what are we, we where got. can we start? Um, all right. Brian Gomes loves the show. Says, "Should I try to boost my eighty four nine eleven engine f to track and mountain runs in New Jersey, or will it just open a can of worms?" Okay. This question response will cover all subsequent air cooled horsepower responses of right. the night. The <clears throat> as we've said before, and as we continue to say, air cooled nine eleven horsepower is the worst value in horsepower on earth if you have an early 80s 911 that makes 160 to 180 horsepower getting that car to 250 horsepower is going to cost you twenty five thousand dollars getting it to 300 horsepower will cost you fifty thousand dollars getting it to 350 horsepower will cost you seventy five thousand dollars i'm not bullshitting you call a shop and ask that's legit it is a deep, dark rabbit hole of air-cooled Porsche horsepower. There and his other option is to add a turbo, but adding a turbo to an old engine is also going to be a bit of a rabbit hole. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you're, yeah, because you're not just going to turbocharge that engine. You now you're talking about a top-end rebuild. You're talking about a, you're talking about twenty-five grand, no matter what. There's no free lunch here. So. If you don't think that that car is up for track and canyon use. You either you need to be prepared to buck up and get it there or you need to buy a different car or another car but there's no cheap way to make that car fast you know what i mean like you can improve response you can get a lighter flywheel give you better response you can get you know different certain different things to improve response but that's expensive horsepower you should just shorten the gearing shorten the final gear right you can do that Probably you can shorten the way. final gear you can shorten some of the intermediate gears individually like that that and a flywheel and, and a couple of bolt-ons here and there and you know a steve wong chip you know might to improve response and liveliness that might help you a lot more than that horsepower is going to be fucking expensive an 84 he's talking about an sc that's expensive power Oof. yeah brutal um <clears throat> david with big donation by the way thank you david uh uh says do you guys ever go back and watch old videos from the playa days like director's <laughs> commentary no, no, never. I don't. I can't even watch myself on the screen across the room in real time. I make Zach click away when it's just me on the screen for too long. I can't. I watch. I have occasionally watched videos that I edited when we were doing like some produced stuff. Like I think our second most viewed video of all time is the Countach Aventador video, which the Countach, of course, I ended up buying later. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, but I edited that video, and having taught myself to edit, I was particularly proud of the editing job I did in that video. So that one is, I, I, I told a story in that video with music and actors and like lines and shit. 
and I was proud of that. Yeah, you edited a lot of stuff. I forgot, like towards I the. Did. Not, I did. I'm not a terrible editor because I like watched you had Tom. To do it. Right. Uh, yeah. So if you know what a good end result is going to be, then it's just figuring out cutting, advanced cutting and pasting. Buns Learning to, to edit there. is a great skill, and it's not very hard. Yeah, the tutorials you can find on YouTube are so good mm-hmm. and so detailed, and because if you're probably better at editing than me now. I I don't think I I've, you're better I've at done sound very editing few, for sure. Like long format things though. You're I better like at sound editing. Special. Oh, it doesn't. People more can that. tell when I mix the episode and when you do because you do a better <laughs> job of sound than me. Um, agree. Er, or Ergy says, "How does tuner horsepower feel compared to factory horsepower?" Well, that's an interesting question. Mm, indeed. I mean, tuner horsepower almost always feels not like compromised. You've almost everything is a give and take. Right. So there's very few times where you gain a bunch of horsepower and you give up nothing at all. There's always almost something. But usually you're willing like maybe. OK, you, you get a, a car like a GTI or a hatchback or whatever, and you put a tune. You're not giving up anything there. But I'm talking about if you take a car that came with 300 horsepower and you make it 600 horsepower or 700 horsepower, you you give up. You know, bottom end usability. Maybe you give up a smooth idle. Maybe you give up, excuse me, maybe you need a heavier clutch. You know, maybe you've changed the shifter. So now it's a short throw shifter, which is, quote, maybe better, but not as smooth. Maybe you, you know, you change bushings. So your steering is faster, but it's, it creaks when you go over speed bumps and stuff like that. So it's a compromise, right? So a stock, a factory horse, a factory car will always feel slicker and more integrated. Mm -hmm. You know, it'll do, it'll be more versatile for the same level of performance than your tuner car would be. Like if you have a a nine 11 that does zero to 60 in three and a half seconds, right Uh, from the factory, It'll do it over and 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 over again. And not all cars will do that, but but it, but it will. Versus building a car that did zero to 60 in five seconds from the factory, making it do three and a half. And I don't give a shit about zero to 60, but just, we're just using a metric, right? You're now stressing all of that shit, you know, 40% harder. So you're giving up something on the other end. What that is, is usually refinement. It's noise. It's it's fuel economy it's civility it's that kind of stuff so every everything is a compromise but typically factory performance is as little of a compromise as possible i would say it will feel consistent in more areas than tuner horsepower like Mm. from idle it will probably feel similar in in like thrust to mid-range to high range depending on the platform of course but like if you go with an aftermarket downpipe and a tune, and then depending on who tunes it, if it's off the shelf or if it's custom, if it's off the shelf, then it has to work on as many cars and engines as possible. So there might be like weird little holes in the power band where right. it drops and goes up and da da da. Or if you get a custom tune, the power band should be really, really, really smooth, but the tuner will decide where they want to put the power and the torque. So, like we saw with um, the M cars in the last couple of years, the power came on really early. You had max torque from like 1700 RPM and it just like jumped up like a cliff and then stayed up there. So you just got this boom and it was just all torque and all power. And then it kind of like slowly tapers off. Whereas if you have a, a tuned car with bigger down, uh, down pipes and stuff, it's going to make more of the power later. It's got to spool up those turbos, especially if they're aftermarket and you're not going to feel it till later and up in the rev range. I actually recall the M3, the, the turbocharged current M3 is a good example. Cause I recall in the stock car you get really big torque early and typically like a quote stage one tune turns that up even more so all the cars i'd driven that were like stock turbos but tuned were like worse because they took a bad trait and made it more and because people tend to think more is better and it's not And then I drove one of those M4s that had a bigger turbo on it. And actually having a bigger turbo and adding in some lag and and chilling out that low range a little bit, I found to be a more desirable uh, trait. So Mm -hmm. in that particular case, you know, BMW made one set of choices 
and then the regular tuners who work with the stock components made another set of choices. And then once you go with a bigger turbo, you have a whole other set of choices to make. And so in that, in that case, I found it to be improved, but, but that's where you take one person's singular vision of what improved is versus the stock car, which is a design by committee. Right. And you get yeah. more of, you get more of a wider use case. Yeah. Yeah. Stock power will just feel. Yeah. Make in general, in happen. general, you always, always, always start with the highest performance variant of the car you can afford. Always. It's always worth it. Don't go, just an example, don't say, I'm not going to get the Z06 because I'll just get a base car and build it up. Like, you can't buy that that level of reliable performance for less money. You can, I'm sorry, you can't build it for yeah, less money. True. Um, all right, Daniel Berman says, am I crazy for wanting an Aston Rapide, or should I just say screw it and get a Model 3 Performance or an S-Class Coupe? Okay, uh, whoa, well, well, yes, you're I all over the he fucking He says, world yes, here. I know nobody is cross-shopping these. Well, so look, the Rapide is, is basically a DB9, okay, which there's nothing really wrong with it. It's fine. It's The V12 NA is a stout engine. The Rapide has a regular torque converter automatic gearbox, right? It's 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 there's nothing actually wrong with a Rapide, um, aside from the fact that it is a four door car that has a fundamentally unusable back seat. Yes, it does. If that bothers you, then it's a problem. But I've driven both Rapide and Rapide S, and they drive basically identical to DB nines. I don't know that they have any horrible reliability issues. They are super depreciated because nobody fucking wants them. I, which I understand why nobody wants them. Mm -hmm. But they're a pretty cool entry into Aston Martin ownership. They're nice to drive. They make great sounds. Um, I would dig around deeper. I've never looked into the long-term reliability, but I think they're fine, actually. I think it's okay. I don't, I've don't. i never heard, like, stay away or any of that. I mean, I think you just really got to figure out how how many times people get in the backseat of your car and what size those people are. Mm -hmm. Because if it's not often, and if you really want a coupe because they're looking at S-Class coupes, like the S-Class coupe is awesome and has just as usable a backseat, even mm -hmm. though it's harder to get into because it's only, you know, two doors. The backseat in this thing, like I sat behind you when we had one long ago. I mean, it was ridiculous. It's like, stupid. It was hilarious. No, it's so dumb. Uh, yeah. The only point, the real point against the Rapide is that the back seat sucks and DB nines are also depreciated and, and so exist. and so yes. you can just get a DB nine, and and it's kind of the same thing. Yeah, but if you prefer the Rapide, you know the their value uh, on the market is less than their value. I think as a car. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like they're pretty fucking cheap. Nobody wants them. Yeah, and there's nothing really wrong with them that would lead nobody to want them. That you don't already know. Backseat small. Eh. You know what I mean? Besides that. And if you buy one used, it's already depreciated yeah. a lot. I mean, it'll, it'll still lose money quicker probably than the Yeah, the Model one we tested 3. was like $275,000 or yeah. something. This I, I think I think these things are like 50 Gs. And remember, if you remember, the trunk was so small in that that we had to have your vet driven by Tim to bring the fun. golf clubs. We, we did like a bit at a that golf club. That was a bit. Yeah. But we had, we had we to did. have a golf valet because you in couldn't a, hold in a anything. Corvette. And the Corvette held all of our golf clubs. <laughs> yeah, ridiculous. Um, uh, Sam Lucas says, thanks for recommending he rent a Boxster when he came to L.A. Uh, good. He rent, and now he bought a Carrera S. Uh, a Boxster is a fantastic Los Angeles car. Because you know why? The mid-engine, when you have a mid-engine car, you've got better ride quality. If you're a mid-engine car versus a front-engine car, the mid-engine car... 90% of the time will ride better because of geometry and math. Um, Vlad says, I started noticing 2009 to 2011 Mercedes MLs on the road, especially the 63s. <clears throat> Is it normal to like them or should I self-isolate and call a doctor? Hmm. Uh, talk to your priest. <laughs> confess. <laughs> I mean, there's parents. nothing terrible about an ML 63. There's, it's, I mean, fast SUVs are not the best. I'm, do we even mention what I that I drove up in the a Levante? We did for we did we, briefly. Yeah, but we yeah. did. I'm driving a Levante Trofeo right now, which is a fast SUV. Um, it looked there's nothing wrong with the ML63. It's a fine car. You're allowed to like them. Mm -hmm. they, it's a good looking vehicle. Don't some of the pursuit, uh, some of the Russian arm guys use these? Yeah, they do. It's uh, this and Cayennes. 
Um, they real all of these AMG SUVs are fantastic five and six tenths vehicles at seven, eight, nine, ten tenths. The the st- traction and stability control doesn't trust you at fucking all. <laughs> no, it's a GT car. It's a GT SUV. Yeah, That's really yeah. what it is. But they but but they're nice. They have good seats. Good seats, yeah, good engine good seats. sound, you know, muscly. They don't pretend to be race cars. Um as right. much as the Porsches and BMWs do. Yeah, I think I think more of the camera crews go with Cayennes because they they are Hand- better SUVs for sports driving, which you have to do a lot of the times. And also isn't the Cayenne's air suspension more a little more reliable than Mercedes under real duress? Uh, uh, maybe. It uh, seems maybe. so. I mean, yeah. people drive the crap out of them with an extra thousand pounds on them, yeah. and they do a pretty good job. They still run the old Cayennes in a lot of them, a lot of those Russian arms. Like yeah. The really old Cayennes. Well, because I think it's cheaper and it does the same job. Yeah. You know? uh, they're going to strip the interior anyway. Um, let's do a, let's make this a two second answer. Daniel Berman, 2013 F Type or 2013 Boxer? Same money. Boxster. Um, same thing. Joe Bertha, forty grand. Early V eight Vantage or DB nine, similar shape. Mm, I go Vantage. Vantage. I'd go Vantage, but I'd really try to find the extra cash to buy the facelift Vantage, rather than the oh early yeah one. yeah the one true. that has the four point seven. Yeah, if you can find the money, make it happen. All right, Wiley's uh, says he lives in an apartment. How should he tactfully ask his neighbors to lubricate their bed springs? The lady's loud moaning at 1 a.m. is not the problem. A broomstick from below is unbearable. Slammed against their floor. I think that was that, that's like the funniest donation we've ever gotten because it was like a pretty good one and it's just a ridiculous question. <laughs> how do I tactfully ask? Uh, I I mean, how dare you ask if your neighbors are just banging? That's so funny though. He's like the moaning's fine because he enjoys it yeah uh it's the squeaking that's you know, like when, a nails on a chalkboard thing when nino was living at the crib uh and dating uh the stripper mm-hmm. he had this bed frame that he got from an artist i remember that it was reclaimed wood <laughs> he got ripped, ripped off i remember <laughs> it i looked at it, i was like oh this is wood bolted to a normal and bed he, frame he, god this fucking girl would it would it would be squeaking and then slamming into the wall and then she would be scream i mean like she was putting on a performance. She put on a great she show. She was putting on a real Oscar-worthy performance down there. And um, she was auditioning to the beach is what she was doing. Yeah, I mean, he was living in my house. He wasn't just a, a random neighbor upstairs. So I had to be like, can you tell her to bring it from an Oscar <laughs> to an Emmy? Maybe a daytime Emmy? Bring it down a level because this, this, this showmanship is I don't want to live at the opera. <laughs> Amazing. It was crazy. Um, man, here's how you do it. You write a letter. Yes, yes. Write a letter. You do. You write a letter. Anonymous letter. Yeah. And you leave it and they will, they'll buy a new bed so fast. And you, you get a, you get, you use your right hand and your left hand and three different pens to make it seem like <laughs> several people have signed it. Oh, that's, <laughs> oh, that's funny. I thought you're like, so they don't know who it is. Like, well, no, how no, do they no. know his handwriting Multiple anyway? signatures, different pens. Or you could be creepy and do the clip art thing, so it's like a ransom note. Yeah. Um, all of those are good ideas. This is it. Let us know how that works out, by the way. Uh, Chris Bradford says, thanks he thanks us for podcasting. Um, is the sound of a 718 Boxster really that bad? No. He's considering a decently mm. discounted semi-new one. Uh, he doesn't use the letter S in there. But I really prefer the Boxster S to the regular Boxster. It has an extra half liter of displacement. It has a variable geometry turbocharger. Which and you helpful. really notice the difference when you drive the car. If you can swing it, get the S. I mean, and the, to the sound, like, have you never heard one? Like, if you haven't heard one, He it said he drove like, it, but it was very brief. If you asked Porsche to design a Subaru engine for you, that's what it sounds like. Imagine a Subaru engine, but more technical. And because it's behind you, you don't have the exhaust passing underneath you. So it's more refined. Like if you even put an American V8 fully behind the driver, it's a much more refined experience than having it in front of the driver because the exhaust gases don't pass underneath you. You don't have a drive shaft mm-hmm. that goes underneath you. So like 
it's more refined. It feels like a Porsche engine, but it does sound a little. It's kind of weird. It's like kind of Subaru. It's kind of Volkswagen. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I couldn't really come around on the sound. I was surprised. Maybe with an exhaust, they, they would sound good. But thrummy. I know they're fast. They they're real. Like the, the GTS, I think when we had it on Proving Grounds, it was real close to the uh, the GT3. Mm-hmm. It was a very fast car. Yeah. Um, yeah, just, I don't know. Go look at Go listen to one. Uh, Blake C. Woody says, uh, how much is the R33 driving experience worth? Because they sell between 50 and 60 Gs. Are they really that expensive? So... GTRs get progressively rarer as they get newer, right? So 33s are rarer than 32s and 34s are rarer than 33s. By a pretty there's a, and there's a pretty big jump. It goes like there's like 65,000 R32s built and then like 20,000 R33s and then like 5,000 R34s. It's a pretty big I don't quote me on those numbers, but it's a there's a shelf. So values of these cars are typically linked to you know, their availability. And so right now, you can only get one year of them, right? It's the first year to import them. So a really nice one is going to be pretty expensive. I think the prices will settle on them a bit uh, as we get the next two years of them importable. Um, certainly, I think there's a there's a a reason to believe. I talked to Sean at uh, Top Rank, and he said he's got quite a few folks who are giving him average money to buy one in Japan and just hold it there until it's legal. That's mm. actually a, a fairly smart, affordable thing to do, especially if you want to like pair it with a trip to Japan as a vacation, pick out your car, keep it there, and then import it when it's legal. So he's got a warehouse in Japan. Um, how much is the driving experience worth? 50 to 60 like is it no. worth is it is is the driving experience of this worth more than an R thirty two? I don't have a lot of R thirty three seat time, but no, not really. The styling maybe is updated. You get a little bit better, you know, stuff inside, but just driving it, I mean, no, not really. And even the R thirty two and the R thirty four are like real close like unless you drive them back to back they're pretty similar i mean you get more power you know and you get a sixth gear with the r34 but like well the r34 i think the looks are different enough from the 32 and 33 for the 34 right that it like it's it's also like a famous movie car but i think that's what sets it apart is everyone looks at it and goes that's fucking cool looking yeah and it and it's more unique where the 33 like I don't know how much of the metal is actually different, and someone can correct me if you want. But like, okay, the headlights are different. The front valence is definitely deeper than the thirty twos. But overall, it's like the headlight size is about the same. The headlight shape is very similar. Like it has this kind of rounded yeah. uh, geometry going on. And the thirty four was much more like angular and stronger looking. Yeah, for me, the thirty four is the one to have. The thirty three personally doesn't do anything for me, although for others they might they might be all about it. And the thirty two I like because it is the best value in terms of the driving experience for the for the money uh, by far. So I mean, what is the driving experience of a thirty three? Yeah, like forty five, forty 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 five thousand dollars maybe just in in, in driving experience. Um, I mean, if if it makes them feel better when, uh, so we had an R32 on Proving Grounds last year, and Sam Smith had never driven one. Yeah, and he got out of it and he was like, "Fuck, these are way better." He's like, "They're even better than everybody says they are." Yeah, like, they rule. absolutely live up to everything and exceed it. He was, 32s he was are the shit. They're super super fun. I mean, a, a R32 is like, it's the one. Mine was a 1990, and it felt like a. 2013 BMW 335 in terms of like performance or like you know F type manual uh, levels of performance like it was fucking it's fast so uh, it was and it, it was just a lovely refined you know vibration not a lot of vibrations really smooth great power love it love it what else you got um, mm-hmm. someone said how do we think Ford's lineup will change now that it is confirmed they will be bankrupt li- I love this. Confirmed they will likely be bankrupt. I Googled it really quickly. I didn't spend a lot of time, but um, I couldn't find anything that said. It, it, there's a lot of uh, speculation that just says in the next recession, Ford could go bankrupt. So, I um, don't know. Let's uh, yeah. see if it happens. What, you know, uh, Is their lineup going to change? I mean, they've already, already eliminated cars. Trucks are hugely... I mean, they have the most 
the ha- the the most the best selling thing in the U.S. is the F one fifty. They probably just um, keep doing what they're doing and they yeah. just have to restructure. I don't know how that works. I'm just using words I've read. <laughs> restructure if the financing. They're not making money. It's not because people aren't buying their shit. Mm-hmm. People are buying their their trucks. I mean, although if there's a huge recession, no one's buying anything. I don't know. Right. But but I I mean. I, someone, I think this is, that's, I, yeah, I, I would move on. I don't think that's, yeah. there's a legitimate, I don't think that's a legitimate thing right now. Yeah. One article was like, Tesla CEO says like, all right, yeah, yeah. slow down. Oh yeah. Slow down. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> Wait, Elon Musk said it? Oh, it's definitely happening then. Sorry. Sorry. He's really, really reliable source of information. Uh, Gear Knob said, are there cars that we think people should keep an eye on for value crash with coronavirus? 996s look to have already dropped a few grand. I mean, at, Anything. I well, I've been watching Bring a Trailer, and things. That there's there's definitely a settle. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Not a lot of people are trying to buy cars right now. If anyone who's on the edge of I have a little extra cash, maybe I'll buy a sports car, is d- not doing that. Or if you are, like, mm, that's not too smart. <laughs> if you if you're using your little savings to buy a sports car right now, maybe you shouldn't. But Harris just did a really good episode that came out yesterday on. Uh, collecting cars podcast uh-huh. like all about this specific thing and and the takeaway was like buy what you love yeah and you know don't worry as much about the money like but the, the the things that have survived and done well is usually cars that people just love because they love the car not because they're speculating yeah you know? there you go that's a good that's that's a good tip but I like and that more tip. importantly buy something that you want to drive because you're going to have it for you like you know you're not going to buy it and bubble it yeah. And then, you, what, five years later, you open the garage again and then see how much values have gone up? Like, that's. That I mean, if you've like been looking at a car that you want to buy in the last six months and you and the money's not a problem and you go, wow, people are fucking losing their minds right now and prices have settled, like, yeah, buy the car. De- buy the car. Like, it's, there's no reason because some people are sick that you shouldn't buy a car. Right. And it's a good time to go for a drive by yourself. The roads are pretty empty. Like, yeah. enjoy that car. I don't think there will be any specific model of car that will stand out versus no. others. No, you know? I don't think so. But yeah. that advice from Chris is good. Just the cars that people love to drive, the cars that people love to own, despite their value either way, will be fine. Yeah, it was like those will do better. And obviously there's ones like the F40 will not drop because yeah. it's an F40. But other than those things, just buy things you love. Even in there aren't there are people who are certainly above a recession in terms of they'll be fine, but they that doesn't mean that they don't adjust their spending habits in a recession for yeah. sure. I mean, for me, I'm not selling shit. I'm in a hold position right now because I'm not. I mean, at least unless things turn really bad, I, I have a roof over my head. Like I'm be fine. So it's not. It's you know I wouldn't. Now's not a good time to start selling. <laughs> right. Um, but if you are in a position to be buying, yeah, it's a, probably a good time to buy. Yeah. yeah in general. Um, All Car Holics Video says, since we're going to be locked in for the next few weeks, I figured I'd finally attempt to learn reupholstery for my new Drift SN95 project. Nice. Any tips on where to find funky fabrics like you used? Um, the fabric from my Mustang came from a place just on the internet called Modern Fabrics. And the fabric is meant for like... Uh, patio furniture and then my safari fabric is from a, a commercial bus supplier for like city buses i went to the container store and i saw like the chillowitch name for uh, placemats and i remember john ward used it in some of the icon seats oh the placemats yeah he was yeah, like yeah. and he was like i love that stuff because it's really really tough yeah and it's stain proof yeah for the most part yeah oh, that's a good idea you can do weird things like that um evan drinker i like this question uh, he saw a Tesla on the autopilot, on autopilot, doing five over in the left lane with a ton of cars behind it. If they can literally program good habits, should they? And what would we include? Oh, yeah, well, that's a good one. I mean, the answer to that is yes. If you can program good habits, you definitely should, uh, including keeping right except to pass. Um, but I don't. I mean. I don't think Tesla specifically wants to discourage. I think they want to encourage their people. I don't think it's right, but I think what they want is to encourage their people to use it more places. They they want that data, even, I think, at the expense of the safety of the people in those cars. It would be great, though, if they programmed in, like, left lane passing only and then moved back over. Like, yeah. if they did that and people started noticing 
people that are driving the cars notice the car did that and maintain like the speed, like maybe it would actually just kind of propagate that teach, behavior. It would teach them. Yeah, that's highly it might. optimistic of you, Clapman. Well, I'm in a good mood. Speaking of which, you saw that story up from before the truck thing. This company that was yes. developing a autonomous truck, uh, and apparently sent a truck down a highway autonomously at one point, some miles. Uh, Starsky Robotics. Yeah, so they the company is, is failing, and then the statement from the CEO of the company is pretty much, um, scroll down, the good quote is down at the bottom where he compares to C-3PO, um, where he says, he basically says that- Oh, here we go. Yeah, what is the last couple, That what is that, read that paragraph. Uh, there are too many problems with the AV industry to detail here. The professional pace at which most teams work, the lack of tangible deployment milestones, the open secret that there isn't a robo-taxi business model, etc. <laughs> the biggest, however, is that supervised machine learning doesn't live up to the hype. It isn't actual artificial intelligence akin to C-3PO. It's a sophisticated pattern matching tool. Exactly. A computer can't do a fucking thing that you don't tell it to do. And the problem with all of this shit is that driving, once you are taught how to, that that certain amount of steering wheel input and certain amount of brake and accelerator input, once you're taught what those things do and what the lines on the road and the lights in the sky mean, it's all about scanning and doing what if scenarios in your head. What if a bicyclist comes out of here? What if this guy who's passing me moves over? What if this? What if this? And it's constant improvising. I mean, you're you have to how often do you see someone in another car doing some fucking weird shit and you just have to like stop in the middle of the road, maybe like reverse into a three point turn or like get yourself out of there by driving down an alley or some type of improvisation. Computer can't do that. It just can't. It'll just stop and go, because no one has programmed that very specific scenario in, but a human, even the dumbest fucking human around can go, wow, well, that's a, uh, there's a, there's a man fucking a motorcycle that looks like a Jaguar parked right in the middle of the road there. <laughs> Is his dick actually in the gas tank? I should probably make a three-point turn and go the so other way. a signal and go around or a hazard? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but a human can figure that out. The computer would sit there and go, well, I'm just going to wait for that guy to nut on the gas tank, I guess. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if, uh, you know, like Tesla, they take all the data from every mile their car drives and then they put it somewhere. So even if you're driving the car... They're taking that data. So I wonder if now, like if you drive around the man fucking the Panther bike or the Jaguar bike, excuse me, does does the computer watch you do that and go, oh, did they move over for a pothole? Did they move because the line wasn't painted? Did they move because the, the bird flew over? Or did they move because that person was stopped in the middle? Like they have to figure out right. why the car did that thing instead right. of, and so that's the hard part is you're programming all these, <clears throat> excuse me, it's called if then. Yeah. The computer has to know if I see this, then I do this. And it but is there's just literally an infinite of amount of if thens. Yeah. There's no guy dragging a log on a chain down a canyon road. How do you program that? Right. That's true. You know what I mean? People doing look at let's just list off the five wacky things I've seen while doing one takes. None of which would occur to any programmer's fucking scenario list. People doing push ups in the middle of the street. That's right. <laughs> What do we do then? You know what I mean? Like, that's a real thing. No, everybody listening, that's a real thing that a happened. Real thing. It was. I forget what I was driving. It might have been a BMW M4. I don't remember, but I remember it was a real thing. You're like, hey, there's a guy just doing push-ups just in the street. Just doing push-ups, middle of the street. I mean, you know, it's that's and this is what this person is admitting. This guy who's run this company for years and got somewhere and spent all this time doing nothing but fucking doing this and going. It's an open secret that this is bullshit. Yeah, he says, you know, he loves to be wrong, but it's uh, it's just very, very difficult. Very, very difficult. Yeah, but but robo taxis though. By the end of twenty twenty. Oh yeah, your car is gonna make money. It's gonna appreciate. Um, it's probably not good. Uh, Adrian Polito says, "How much do you think watches will come down in recession?" He's looking to pick up a Santos or a Speedmaster reduced as his first watch. I think. I think they will. I, well, I think what's interesting is. Um, 
anything that isn't a super, super, super primo piece will come down. And so Speedmaster Reduced or Santos, both are watches that I think will will come down, especially if you wait it out and people start to to run out their savings. And this is this is very crass, but this is this is capitalism. People start to run out their savings and sell. And I think I think those watches are going to come on the market um, eventually. But um I also think that um, as people are sitting at home and bored, um, those who can are online shopping. And so I've talked to Crown and Caliber, and they pretty much have been like, yeah, you know, on the days where bad news happens, <laughs> nobody, uh, no one buys anything. But then on the days where, like, no news happens for a while, but people are stuck at home, um, people buy watches, <laughs> as it turns out. So, um you know, it's a it's a day to day market shift, but overall, if we go into a recession, yeah, that's that's when it's a good time to buy watches. Yeah, that's true. Um, let's try and do some like speed round stuff. Yep. Uh, is the Veloster N worth the premium over the Fiesta ST? New or used? Doesn't matter. <sighs> there is no more Fiesta ST. You're talking about a, a, a two year old car at a minimum versus a car that's brand new. So it's not even like a premium. It's just new cars cost more because used cars. And it's also bigger right? and heavier and more powerful. And it's really more comparable to a Focus ST than a Fiesta it's way ST. way better than a Focus ST in my it's opinion. It's a lot better than Much a Focus better. ST. If you can find a brand new Fiesta ST still left in America, I'd probably buy that. And it should cost less than the Veloster. It should be a lot less. Yeah. Um, but Veloster ends are great. I've had a, I've Everyone I've driven has been great. They're worth what Hyundai charges for them. Yeah, I think it's a Mini Cooper that will probably last longer. Yeah. That's what it feels like. Yeah. Um, which Lego car would you build? Uh, because everyone's stuck inside. That's why I pulled up this because we found it the other time. Oh, the Batmobile. Batmobile. Yeah, Technic. yeah, yeah. Lego Technic three thirty three hundred pieces. We've got the Lego Technic, uh, the char the sixty eight Charger that me and Hannah are gonna do. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay, sixty grand. A uh, nine nine one Carrera S or Clarion builds NSX. Ooh, sixty grand. That NSX. That NSX was lovely. As long for as for a street it, car. For a street car. Yeah, street it, car. It needed an intercooler. Yeah, yeah. It was, but first they overcranked the pulley, and they didn't yeah. need to do that. It's really cool. But it was. But either way, that car was rad as fuck. It was gorgeous, and those cars should work for a very They're long very time. Very good. Um, Charles says thanks. Paul says thanks. You're welcome, everybody. Oh, my God, this poor guy. I'm finishing up the engine out service on my B6 S4, looking to get new coilovers, uh, light track work, and daily driver duty. He's looking at KW or Bilstein. Is it worth the premium to get two K a $2,000 set over a $1,000 set? So KW and Bilstein both make a really fine quality product, and I would say... The Bilstein and the entry level KW are in the same place. What you get with the upper level KWs are at more adjustability. So I don't know how often you want to adjust your shit, and I don't know how precise maybe you want to take it to a shop to adjust your shit. I don't know. Depend. It depends. You know the the. Yeah, in general, a two thousand dollars set of coilovers will probably be better than a one thousand dollars set of coilovers, in terms of quality and in terms of adjustability. KW is great. Bilstein is also a very high quality product. Um, but I think I think it really comes down to the level of adjustability you want and how often you. Might, I know I had a triple adjustable once, and I had a shop set it, and then I never changed it. Well, how is that better than a single adjustable? Like, I don't know. I don't know the fucking, I don't know the difference, you know? Did, do lap times matter to you, or is it really just about the ride and the and the feel? So those are the things that I would look at in terms of the quality. But either of those companies make a fine product. I, I think I'd, if you can ride in a car that has, like, the Bilsteins, or both of them really try that, because you may get in the, the cheap one and go, oh, this is exactly how I want a car to ride, yeah. and you don't need to adjust it. But if you need, if you go, well... The, the rebound's a little too aggressive, but the compression is fine. Like, well, then you're going to want an adjustable. Cause and if he's going from his, if he's taking out the stock setup and putting either of these in, they'll both feel amazing very compared true. to the stock. Because the stock shocks that we got to be tired by now, you know. Um, Brent is looking for a watch around 300 bucks, like the Sterling Modena 889 in gold. Any recommendations similar? I would never buy a sterling watch and you shouldn't either for 350 dollars you should buy a gold seiko turtle 
that is your watch or a gold Seiko Presage. It's like not real gold, it's PVD gold, but for $300, Seiko. It's a vertically integrated, or Orient, which is Seiko's sister company. Totally vertically integrated. They make all their own products. Sterling basically makes knockoff Rolexes. Mm. They get right up on the edge of trademark infringement, That's and they funny. sit there, yeah. Um, Joe Craver watched seasons one to four of Drive on NBC Sports and says, great show, but now oh, he needs more thanks. car stuff. We got a lot of it. <laughs> Keep, <laughs> watch the C- they kept making it. We, well, yeah, we, we kept making the show, for one, uh, but also tan- uh, the, the Smoking Tire has a ton of content as well. I can't recommend, I don't watch anything. I tried to watch this movie on Netflix called Go Karts. Mm-hmm. I tried to watch it. I got five minutes. It's totally unwatchable. I think the Throttle House guys do a really good job. They do like TV level shit on the internet. Um, I've I've gotten to respect that. Anything Jason Camisa does is going to be very educational and worth your time. Formula One kind of Drive to for. Survive on oh, Netflix. That. That's the one to watch yeah. right now. Watch, and just watch it twice. Yeah. Um, thanks for the content. Would we ever do a podcast with video... Oh, would we ever do, ever do a guest using video chat because of quarantine? <sighs> if we are forced to, yeah, we will. But it the vibe just sucks. It's just not good. Yeah, it's not as good. I I'm sure that we can find some people that are comfortable being in a room with us on this. I think you scale. would work with like friends, and but they also have to have good audio equipment because if they call in on a phone and we're on this, yeah. the difference. And when I listen to podcasts, I find it like a little bit jarring. I just don't pay attention as well. I agree. Um, <laughs> last two. What are our thoughts on the GS three fifty F Sport or IS three fifty F Sport for daily driving and track duty? <sighs> Um, I mean, the GS is like, that's really heavy for track duty. Yeah, it handles really good, it actually. Does. It really, really good. They both handle good. I mean, track duty, I'd probably just go with the IS just because it's smaller and more agile, although the GS is shockingly good for its size. True. I mean, he uh, lists an M3, which would be better, but far less reliable. The GS is like, I need the back seat all the time. That's what the, the GS and the IS, like front seat room, fundamental dynamics pretty similar the real difference is back seat and trunk space from is to gs if you don't need that just get the is because smaller and lighter is better uh, especially on the track but the gs i remember driving gs 350 f sport shockingly good if you get a gs 350 f sport and somehow get a lotus avora supercharger to work on it because it's the same engine that would be the the fucking jam like 420 horsepower good sounding v6 with that handling would be awesome um it was really good very good car whoa this guy donated last time oh very really? generously i um, was sure that that number was a typo from last time but right. i guess not he says he's not as drunk as he was last time oh. but it sounds like you're, it looks like you're still pretty <laughs> drunk and we appreciate the hell out of it um he says, uh, would you hang on to a, Lan- this is, a, I think, a watch, a Lang datagraph in the current oh. situation or get rid of it? Hold. I would hold. A Lang datagraph is a beautiful watch that has the possibly the most beautiful chronograph movement of any watch in production. I had the word movement mm, that's a very good to watch. that. Uh, Langs are the shit. And uh, it's actually pronounced a long soon. It's written a lang and son. But uh, these are absolutely stunning. They've got the big date on the top center. That's a big lang uh, uh, trademark is the big date. And big date is actually a tough t- complication compared to this, the normal date that you see on watches. And this is a, a hand wound big date chronograph. And it's only available in precious metals, gold, white, gold, and platinum. And this thing is not a big watch. It's probably, I think, a 39 millimeter. But it it's not just that it's heavy. It's that it feels so dense. You know that control arm you were talking about earlier? Mm-hmm. The opposite of that. Got it. Where it's like, oh my God, this thing is so heavy. It's uranium. Just, it feels like they have put more gold into it than you could fit in it. Can you get a picture of the movement? Just Google move. add the word movement to that because when you look at it from the back, it's hand wound, right? So it doesn't have an automatic winding rotor. So you can see the chronograph movement. 
and the, the movement is just so uh, pretty and ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, look at that, Jeez. and that's that's what it looks like. Um, that's it's got a clear back on it, so that's what it looks like all the time. Wow, half the screws on the back are blue, and there are like so twenty five of them. The blue ones are not screws. The blue ones are called jewels. You know how on a watch sometimes on the face of a mechanical watch it'll say like twenty one jewels or forty eight jewels. Have you ever referred to that? Okay, those are the jewels, and the jewels are basically somewhere between a, a bearing and a screw. Oh, they, they, okay. They, they, they are a lubricating, uh, it's a dry lubricating type of screw. Got it. Like it's like almost like a graphite type of uh, thing. If they're made of metals, I'm gonna fuck up whatever metals they're Got called. It. But 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 it's if you see certain certain mechanical watches on the face, it'll say something like, you know, uh, Omega Professional Automatic 21 Jewels. And if you can or have the ability to look at the back, those blue screws are the are the jewels. It's really but nice. But this is a this movement is a this chronograph. Longa uses some really interesting proprietary metals. This sort of uniquely colored German silver and gold. I mean, fucking look at that. Is that not the most? There's probably in a 39 millimeter watch. So I'm gonna watch this half dollar. There's probably 700 pieces in that watch. Jeez. I mean, and just some of them are so tiny. And that's all hand finished. Every it's one really of those cool. pieces is hand finished. Wow. It's crazy. Yeah, so no, it's gorgeous. The answer to would you hold uh, one of those? Yes, I would, sir. Maximilian. Absolutely. Hold. I would hold one of those. You know why? Because it's fucking fantastic. If you've got one of those, you'll be okay through this. And if if I had one of those, I would just enjoy, I would enjoy wearing it. Oh, wow. We had a lot of questions. Wow, lot people more kept going. Uh, I was going to say, I thought it was the last two. Have we you can, ever driven a dual mass flywheel car? Not to my knowledge. I mean, maybe. I'm not I'm not sure. No one's ever really made a big deal of pointing that out before. I don't know either. Got a lot of thank yous. Thoughts on citizen watches? Uh, I can still hear the ad in my head. Citizen watches? Citizen, make a, citizen. They make a... Uh, Elegant citizen. Citizen. <laughs> cit just, I don't know. I yeah. was watching whatever show I was watching. They advertised a lot. They make a really good, like, a uh, tool watch. Like, if you just want, like... If you're not into watches, but you just want something that like looks nice, they're like solar powered. You know, they're quartz, but they're, they change their GPS connected kind of things. Like they make a fine watch. Yeah, it's not like a watch nerd's watch, but they're fine. Um, this guy sold Hennessy and Ferretti uh, C8 Corvettes, and Hennessy said that the Mag Ride Z51 was the best riding car he's been he's driven. Yeah, you remember agree? that from yeah, P. Cody? It's really, really good. The Z51 Mag Ride was the ride quality was absolutely extraordinary. It's like it's that the McLaren 720 and the and the Phantom are, are really, really it. It feels like it has a 30 foot wheelbase. Yeah, like it's just you're not anywhere near the tires. You don't feel anything. Um, but then when you start going fast, you do feel it. Mm -hmm. um, Someone can send, you can send gifts. Someone sent a little oh, animation. A little, animation. A, little, a little bird doing a thumbs up. I've never seen that before. Neither have I. Cool. Do, do, do. We didn't prepare for this many questions. We didn't. Uh, Instead, we were drinking punch. On, on drive, you drove a swapped Impreza 2.5 RS. You actually drove two of them. I drove a pair. Is it worth swapping and building those? I'm an auto tech by trade. I do all the work myself. I mean... Yeah, they're cool. They're really, really cool. The 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 RSTI swap is where you take one of the short wheelbase two door uh, or the the or four door the early Subaru two point five RSs. Um, for those of us listening outside of America, we didn't get the turbos on Subarus until two thousand and one. So in the nineties, when you guys got WRXs and STIs and shit, we didn't get those. We just got a little one hundred and sixty-five horsepower, one uh, two point five, uh, NA motor. So, uh, so if you take this short wheelbase car, we got to get Bucky on the show. Yeah, Bucky just did this a build awesome. of one. Um, get a picture of Bucky's because his rules. Um, when you take this little lightweight chassis and then you do the full STI drivetrain swap, which is not apparently that difficult if you're competent in Subaru language. Um, although Bucky certainly found a way to make his take a long time. <laughs> his build took a while, didn't it? His did, but I think his is very high level. I th I'm trying to... It looks That's like, it. Is this the it? white one. Yeah, the white one. Said. Okay, because it said... <clears throat> huh. Uh, it said like for his daughter or something? Oh, he filmed it uh, from the purchase off Craigslist for 800 bucks to where it is now. Yeah, so I mean, he, he bought like thing. a project, project car. That's why it took so long. But they drive real cool. 
I mean, and they're fast and and the stuff I think bolts up pretty well. So if you're an auto tech already by trade, and I've seen some of these, like the good thing is from an enthusiast point of view, they're not that expensive when people go to sell. Like you can get into one of these, a pretty good one for like fifteen thousand bucks. Pre swap, like already swapped, like already swapped. Yeah, so yeah. they're not you know unobtainium, but that means for someone like you who's skilled, you could buy a two point five RS and find a junkyard engine and literally bolt it in. And then drive it and have fun with it, and you'd sell it quickly because they're still like really sought after. Just you know, you're not going to sell it for 50, forty grand, but they're fucking rad. They're they're fun to drive, and what's cool about them, like the worst thing about Subarus is when you add power, they explode, right? So you don't want to have to add power in your Subaru. What you can do instead is add lightness. So you by taking your you know your basic 350 horsepower STI chassis and put it in a car that's five or six hundred pounds less you're just removing that stress from the powertrain mm -hmm. and freeing up that horsepower oh his interior looks nice yeah that's very nice uh um, he's got a hydraulic handbrake in there good for you good got seat good recaro seat choice yeah that's excellent they're really cool and yeah. i think people are always in it because the 22b is here but it's so expensive i don't know what those sell for like several hundred thousand dollars i think they're like a hundred grand you know yeah they're expensive these are these are really cool man if you can build one you should um i yeah i recommend but you know don't get in over your head keep it simple don't go crazy you know because that's the kind of build that could really spiral out of control yeah it could it could that's and why i'm saying like, like they're not that expensive so don't don't throw 50 grand in it be, yeah. as a project. And the lesson we learned from the ones I drove on Tuned was spend some money and some time dialing in the suspension. Because one had an amazing setup and the other one had a fairly whack setup. True of any car. Yeah. Um, are there any car, any shit boxes we think are worth unshit boxing? No. <laughs> 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 no. That's, yeah. that's how you end up in shit box land. Yeah, it's, hard, it's hard to like something really like like i like bad cars if i like a bad car it's probably because it's really good looking but there's not there's no shit boxes that it's like the designer knocked it out of the park but unfortunately the committee only wanted to sell it for twelve thousand dollars right like that doesn't yeah, happen yeah, yeah there's no secretly sexy civic that everyone is missing <laughs> right <laughs> that if it only had potential god the centra is just a grand touring no gem. i mean if i wanted there's like like the aston martin lagonda is a shit box for a different reason but like if i wanted to burn a hypothetical million dollars at jonathan ward's shop i would give him a million dollars at an aston martin lagonda and i would say have at it if but like you know that's me i'm weird i'm stupid now why wouldn't you just buy an oldsmobile from the 80s and just drop a weight on it and have the exact same car for way less money <laughs> I, something about that super angular, you know, um, Starling. I don't think it was Jajaro. I think it was um, someone possibly Middle Eastern. It's fucking crazy. The looking. interior is nuts. Yeah, no, the steering wheel. I hate. I actually, oh Jesus, I hit myself in the face. It was Mike there. I hate the steering wheel so much. I would put a. I'd find a way to put a regular steering wheel. But on. But I've never seen a dashboard and an interior that looks more like an arcade or a spaceship in a yeah, movie. Wow. Yeah, that's it's, impressive. It's uniquely terrible. But <laughs> no, but I love that's how more interesting looks. than I was expecting. I love how it looks. It's interesting for sure. And the and that see that picture like that blue one you've like, got pulled it's up. Like dropped. That's well. That's the end of the run. That's a series. Is that series four? I think it's a series four. I think they looked better as they got later in the run. They changed the headlights. They changed the wheels. Do you think it was at having six headlights that they like really knocked they, it out of the park? It's when they added more headlights. It has six. It has as many <laughs> lights as your Safari 911, and your that has aftermarket lights. <laughs> six of their tiny. Wow, that's something else. I, don't I know. love There's it. There's a couple. It's, that's of those. a piece of shit that's worth unshit boxing, right, but was, mostly no. That was a good answer. All right. We'll save the rest of these for another show. Let's see if I can... My, oh, wow. My, there's a lot. Yeah, there's yeah, a lot. Screen grab. There's a lot. I've, and uh, I think my voice is... Well, we're going to have more crew grab. shows, so uh, we can yeah, we'll we just, just keep jump those. into the questions. Can we save... We can save that window, right? Isn't there a way to save those? I literally just screen grab Oh, you just screen grab them? Okay, Because cool. I don't think you can save Well, there will be more of just Zach and I talking, for sure. Because nobody <laughs> wants to be near anybody right now. Nobody wants to be near anybody. I agree. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm going to do my... Saturday activity tomorrow is I'm going to go 
uh, wash wash my cars over at the shop by myself. That's gonna be my get out of the that's cool get out of the house activity. I'm gonna go hike. I went hiking the hike. other day with Hannah, and it was nice. Uh, we went to Los Leones, and as as you you know you pass people on the trail, everyone kind of hold their held their breath and really looked, looked down. Yeah, you give the you give the what's up from like ten feet away, and then you'd kind of hold your breath and and look away. Wow, I'm glad I wasn't the only person doing it. I went for a walk in the neighborhood yesterday, and I noticed more people giving the nod and smile. Mm. Like everyone's kind of having that. Yeah, it's kind of weird, right? Hey, hi, yeah. human. Hey, human. Yeah, a little, we're gonna a little forget how to go back, dude. What if I told you that Demolition Man and Idiocracy were the two most accurate predictors of our future? Like, you know Demolition Man, the, they don't high five, they don't touch. Oh, that's right. They go. And like, they like wiggle their hand yeah. like cone heads or something. Ew, fluid transfer. Oh, you know what I mean? That's like, right. That's, bro, it's happening. Everyone made a run on a teepee and no one had anything, so they went with seashells. <laughs> That's how that that's happened. That's how the three seashells that's started. That's how the three seashells. If you haven't seen Demolition Man, you should go watch they it. They never explain it. Um, yeah, because they didn't, because they couldn't. Yeah. They, they probably sat for a month <laughs> in the writer's room. Like, I don't like, know what you're talking about. Sooner or later, about. someone's like, going to ask us to explain this. And we go, fuck them. No, that's the, that's the best joke. You're just like, no, 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 just let them try to figure it he out. He doesn't know how to use the three seashells. <laughs> like the end of History of the World, and it was like, coming soon, History of the World Part 2. <laughs> that got me. I thought it was coming. Yeah. Or Spaceballs 2, The Search for More Money. I thought that was coming. Yeah. It wasn't. Well, or the Brooks. next episode of this show. You thought that was coming too, it's didn't you? not. No. It's coming. We're going to leave now. But uh, but we'll be back. It's okay because this when your whole you don't you don't really have to close when your whole business is two people in a room. Very true. Yeah, I uh, wrote I wrote on my list, and I'll save it for for the next one because we we crossed off like I wrote eight things on my list and we crossed off five of them. That's pretty good. That is. But one of the ones I wrote was that you and I have been pretty much used to working from home for the last long time and there's people who are probably listening to the show who are working from home for like the first time and I figured I could we could do a bit on on how to work from home without going crazy it think, occurred yeah. to me that we probably we probably both do things that just kind of come naturally that other people wouldn't think about yeah when working from home it's a good idea I've seen yeah. a lot of tweets of like here's how I work from home and like people have to like write that down and read about it but yeah. I guess so if I actually, if I actually take an honest inventory of what I do when working from home, it's it's, it's not going to make people very happy. <laughs> it's not what I'd call, wear the most comfortable it's clothes. It's not you can. what I'd call an inspiration. No, that I put on. I put on pants that have a belt. That's a start. No mesh shorts all day. See, Wiley, you just threw us a big donation. And says, what does the TST blooper reel cost and contain? There's no blooper reel. No blooper I, reel I hate really. to disappoint you. Did I say did I say there was a blooper reel at some point? There isn't one. There You know why? Because it would be dumb to not just put out what we have. The the crazy shit like when weird stuff happens like that that drives traffic to the videos. Like there's nothing like I'm so, I'm super conscientious so there's no Real of like me doing some crazy shit where I'm like oh I'll fucking never show anybody this. Well we and we never when we were filming like a stand up or something, even if it didn't work out and you had to reset, it was never like it's not like on a sitcom set where everyone starts laughing and breaks up because it's yeah. just one person talking to a camera. So you just start and fuck up and go, Hey, hang on and then just do it. Like yeah, that's what I mean, that's the closest it would be. Well, there was the one time, okay, we were filming fuck, I think it was a nine eleven turbo and I'm doing drive bys. We have three cameras set up. A baby runs out into the street. What? It fucking hit the baby at like 100 miles an hour. I mean, it explodes. It goes everywhere. The head, it's it's all over the place. You know, the video is pretty gruesome, you know, but I suppose you could call that a blooper. Is it a blooper? I mean, they, it might have been a homicide, but it, it was also funny. They were cans. <laughs> they were cans. It's a speed reference, people. It's a movie from like 94. Cans. Most Most of you weren't even born yet. <laughs> they were cans. It's okay. It's okay. That's before Keanu Reeves learned how to talk. No, I'm so sorry to disappoint you, but the fact of the matter is, if something funny or outrageous happened on the camera, it was to our benefit to fucking leave it in. <laughs> Just include it. There's there is no there is no secret outtakes real. There just isn't. The fun the the closest thing we have is our confessionals during the all cars things, and those are like just watch those. Just watch all watch all cars two, and that is what the blooper reel is. That's really what yeah. it is because it's us like off the cuff crashing cars into each other, 
breaking things. You tried to scare me by running into a log and ended up smashing all of your lights on the on the van. Oh, yeah. Like honestly, <laughs> go spend four dollars and watch all cars go to heaven too on our Vimeo channel, and that is the blo- the, blo- the blooper reel. Yeah, it's, it's it's really it's solid. It's solid. It All is right. solid. Both of our films are solid. I'd like to make another solid film one day. If anyone ever spends money on ever, anything ever again, then we'll we'll do one of those again. Oh man, we're getting bots in the chat. They oh, found no. us. The hoes have found us. Oh no, let's get the let's end it before these hoes find us for real. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us in the in the quarantine. If we didn't get to your question on this show, and if the question was good and not stupid, we'll save it for the next show. Zach, I just watched Zach screenshot mad questions for the next show. So we, we haven't forgotten you, but we can't fucking just do this forever. <laughs> it's Friday night. I mean, it's Friday night. We have to get home and do nothing. Do absolutely nothing. People keep throwing hundreds. I'll sit here until tomorrow. Hannah and I are, yeah, we're going through, we're going through bottles of wine though. Oh. Going for the red at dinner. All right, guys. Thanks very much for joining us. Make sure you like and subscribe. I think it's the first time I've ever actually said that out loud. Like and subscribe, folks. It's a good thing. Like and subscribe. Uh, the Smoke Entire Podcast is powered by Shout Engine. Get your own damn podcast at shoutengine.com. It's easy. All you need is a microphone, a connection to the internet, and ideally something to say. Good night, everybody. <laughs>